Hey, happy new year. How's it going? Um, I put my mic so I can actually see if it's on mute. Isn't that good? Isn't that, isn't that, uh, isn't that smart? My new year's resolution is to do small things like that to help me, uh, to help me. Um, I'm so glad you're here, everybody. Ah, I'm so excited. I've been getting ready all day. I mean, with content, uh, I tried to do, I watched a video on YouTube about doing an updo. I mean, I, it's up, you know, but like, I, I don't know. It's, it's just good. No one can really see me from the back. Um, and I, I can't find earrings. I don't think, I don't know. I don't have much jewelry, but I, what I do have, I mean, I think I took it to London and I didn't really think about bringing anything. So I don't know if you can tell. I found some washi tape, some little gold sparkle washi, washi tape. So I, I put that on my ears and you know what? I think it works. Um, and oh, it's so great. Yes, and you know what? I was thinking about uh, our East Coast friends and how I'm gonna cheers you in half an hour because it's almost, it's almost midnight where you are. And I know that some people have already had their New Year's moment and some people, you know, I don't know how late we're gonna go tonight. I don't know. We may sign off right before, what is this? What is this? Sign off right before you, um, right before you're gonna to say Happy New Year. But I mean, it's a global village. We have to, we have to work together. <laughs> we all, time zones, they're weird, but we're, it's really good we have them. The world was a crack up before. Okay, let me show you. I gotta say hi to everybody, but here I have party bag one, not bad, and then party bag two. This one, this she's getting old. This one, but it's it's a great little bag. Oh wow, wow, look at that, an old cell phone case. I'm surprised I didn't find a cigarette in here. <laughs> what am I saying? What? Um, so, and then I did, you know, I love to smoke. I just, I can't, you know, you can't, but I, I love it. Um, this one's great. Which one do you like better? Which one? What do you think? I mean, I, I like a little pop of red, but honestly, my lips are red. So I think this is kind of chic. Anyway, you know, when I was looking for these items, <laughs> I... <laughs> I didn't feel depressed. I felt sort of like shocked because I was going through in the closet, like my handbags and I mean, and my dresses. Pandemic, man. I have not worn or used any of fine, fine clothes and handbags that I happen to have in my possession. There's been no reason to. And I mean, I live in Chicago and in London, it's like, I'm sorry, what? You have not worn this dress, this Balenciaga type moment situation in, in how many years? And like, no, I haven't. Oh, and see, I have to show you all my outfit. Yes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Look at that, it's like marble on the bottom or something. You can't tell, but it's like, it's great. Anyway, <clears throat> so, and I was a little bit worried and then I'm gonna stop talking about my outfit, but no, I'm not, no, I'm not. Because <laughs> it feels really good. Um, yeah, this, so this dress, so I tried on another one. I have this velvet, you know, strapless, great. It's great. I've only worn it once, you know, with Eric and I. Eric and I went to Alinea, a, a which is a nice, very nice restaurant in Chicago with some friends. It was a whole thing. It was exciting. It's a big deal to go there, you know? So we were like, oh God. We like literally didn't do two other things we were gonna do because that's how much it costs to eat there. It's kind of dumb, but it's also great. Anyway, so I, got this dress and I'm wearing this dress and it was great. But, and so I put it on tonight cause I was like, well, it's like velvet, you know, it's velvet, black velvet and it's like here. Well, it's actually like here. And I tried it on cause I was like, I don't want to have a wardrobe fail in the middle of the show. But it was not, it would not have been a wardrobe fail in the middle of the show. It was a wardrobe fail from the start because at the way it was cut off, I mean, I looked like I was, Nude. I mean, I completely, I, did, it, I was just bare shouldered and it just looked like I had no clothes on at all. Which, you know, viewership uh, is important, but it's not, it's not the look I'm going for. So, so this is Balenciaga, right? It's pretty good. But uh, when I put this on, I was much more comfortable. But then I, I also thought, is it dressy enough? Because if I was on succession, this would just be what I wear to work. But I'm not on succession. It's also very short but you can't tell that. So I've got my shoes, I've got my handbag. 
I've got my shrimp on. Yes, I knew I knew the um, the green screen would not like that, so we'll just do it like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My updo, updo, and um, and a show for you. And you, you're here, you're here, and I'm thrilled. Myra and Sue and Yovana, happy new year to you. Padma, agreed. Let's hope 2022. I may cry tonight, just a little. I'm not gonna. But like looking at some of the quilts and stuff and just feeling. Oh, and everybody who sent me quilts, unless you sent me a picture, you know, within the last like two hours, because the last two hours are really like to get everything ready for you all. Um, so if you sent it to me last minute, I might not have gotten it. But if you sent it to me before that, you're in the show. I just I just didn't send everybody a confirmation email. That's kind of how that's kind of how it is over here. I'm really bad at email and it's like it's my new year's resolution every year to to be better at it. Um what does that tell you about <laughs> how well that new year's resolution works? I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. Let's not talk about it. Um uh okay, okay, okay. Uh Sue is here quilting politic. Uh word and bird nerd break out the champagne. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. Brendan, goodbye 2021. Hello 2022. Indeed. That is something that is that is a fact. We are saying goodbye to one year and saying hello to another. And time is an illusion. And you know, Eric and I talk all the time about time and space. I think time doesn't exist. Only space exists. I mean, I, trust me. I think time is just a way to measure change. Okay, but uh, where was I? But but I think um, it's so important, right? That we assign numbers to things. How else could we know where we were and what year it is, right? So we have these these numbers, and they're significant. They're important. And 2021. I mean, it feels like we were just here. You know, it was like 2021's got to be better than 2020, and. You know, we've just all gotten a year older. And, and there's one, you know, these trite phrases, cliches, whatever, they can be sort of tiresome. But there's one that I really like. Well, there's two. The shoes make the man. I really think that's true. When I'm wearing shoes of consequence, you know, I feel better. I feel better. I don't know. Um, so I think that's really true. And it's also true that experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. And I think that's pretty good. So 2021, man, we got some experience because we didn't get what we wanted. So if anyone else is ever going through a pandemic, you can be like, come here, child. Let me tell you about the second year of a pandemic, right? But we'll be all right. We're going to be all right. So many people I know are sick. So if you're sick, and I know one person, one nerd out there told me that she was in quarantine right now. And I don't, I don't, I'm not thinking whether you said you have COVID or you were exposed either way. I'm glad that we're keeping you company. Yeah, we're all here, man. This is great. This is great. Um, Belle, the Belle of the Ball, my first viewer ever. I'll always say that, you know, because it's like amazing. Um, NDH, hello. Happy New Year to you. Molly. Hey, Molly. Molly, how's that little? You got a couple little nuggets, right? Your little kids. Don't you have like two, two kids? I don't know. They're probably asleep. Are they asleep? Um, Elaine, hello, hello. Uh, yes. We should all, yes, we should be celebrating Brendan 1000%. I completely agree. Oh, Betty, oh yes, and Betty White passed away. And I've just gotten a link. I've just gotten a link of a Betty White quilt. Wow, that's pretty cool. Okay, we're gonna have to look at that. We'll totally look at that. Betty White is a pretty special person. Okay, um, yeah, where was I? Uh, okay, duh, 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 duh. you're going to quilt con, word and bird nerd. Um, I am too. I'm going to QuiltCon. I'd love to see everybody there. If it goes on, if we're cool, let's do it. Uh, it's going to be very powerful if, you know, I mean, I, I've heard nothing. I, nothing has happened about, you know, not about doing it online again or anything like that. I'm sure people are speculating like crazy. I'm just like holding my breath all the time for everything. But so far, I've got a ticket to Phoenix. And I'll get on that plane, damn it. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know. um, but it'll be it'll be great. Uh, Dana, happy new year. And oh, you're joining from Australia. That's right. Dana, you're in Australia. Happy new year to you. I think it's already happened. It's already happened in London. Um, I wished uh, a few people a happy new year. Feed Puppy, you're working on a quilt themed puzzle. I love it. 
I'll advertise it on this show. If you get it done and it's produced and everything, we'll do a giveaway. Just let me know. Oh, thank you know what? I, I looked I looked up the the um the updo, which is you know, whatever. And then also a smoky eye. <laughs> I I just I don't know. I don't but I think it looks okay. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Um let's see, thank you very much. Uh snowflake wall hanging. Perfect for winter. I found my earrings. No, yeah, Batman, did you hear? It's washi tape. Um, Jill Alex, hello, half an hour to go in Boston. I gotta hurry up with the hello so we can make sure to, to, in 15 minutes, we're gonna wish everybody on the East Coast a happy new year. Teacher Stitch, Little Bird Stitch, Mother Nature, Robin is in New Jersey. Fiendor, thank you. I think that's Old Lang Syne you're playing, right? Hey, Bip. Um, Ivy Kadivy, got your quilt in the lineup, my dear. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Pad my said hello to you. The Circus Geek. With Circus Geek, Happy New Year from France, uh, to France. It's already, I think you've done, you've done the thing. You've done the passing of the symbolic clock hour thing, right? But it's still the sun, the earth, they've been dancing. The, the dance is at the end of, you know, uh, yes, you know what I'm saying. The earth has gone around the sun, a full circle. So that's a big deal, whatever time it is, right? Okay, I'll stop with the time and space thing. Uh, <laughs> Molly is glad I dressed up for the show. You're wearing uh, two kittens and elastic waist pants. You're wearing two kittens? We saw those kittens on your Instagram. Um, hey, Quilting Nancy, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate it. You've subscribed for four months now. You're on a streak, and I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Oh, and, and Word and Nerd. <laughs> ah, ah, what happened? Myra. Myra, you gifted a sub. Thank you for gifting a sub. Okay, and Word and Bird Nerd is uh, watching the show and drinking champagne. Well, I don't know if he's drinking champagne, but Word and Bird Nerd is drinking champagne and the husband is watching. And let me tell you something. Message to all the husbands who are out there. Uh, I got that news a lot, you know, from um, when I was on the show with my mom on TV. You know, people would, and Quilty too, when I did Quilty, uh, people would email or comment or something to say, you know, my husband watches the show. He loves it. You know, he, it's great. He doesn't make quilts, but he loves the show. And also like my six-year-old, you know, daughter or like my six-year-old granddaughter uh, watches the show. And one of one of the people said that uh, the little six-year-old loved the Quilty intro song, you know, and would sing, sing along. Hey, Shasta, Shasta High Road Quilter. Your quilt is in, in the lineup as well. Thank you for following. If you're not following the, the show, the channel, hit the subscribe button or the follow button, whatever, and you'll be notified when I go live. It'll be great to have you. Okay. Uh, SJ Pepper. SJ Pepper's in the chat. Just a guy sewing. Ack Hill. I'm really glad you're here. Have, I just had to make sure, because sometimes the two screen names, Charles, I think of Charles, but he's felt like sweets. You're just a guy sewing. You're so much more than just a guy sewing. Echo, I'm so glad you're here. Um, the send button, <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't, listen, SJ, chatting is a disaster. I mean, you just, you hit send and then you can't edit it and we all understand, believe me. Um, and thank you, Myra, to, uh, yes, for giving a sub to Rod, to Rod Walker. And welcome, Rod Walker, I'm so glad you're here. Okay, so I think we got everybody. Yes, okay, Myra knows. Singing to the quilty. Dun, 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 dun. Quilty. Yeah. Uh, and then over in YouTube, Debbie G. I believe I have a quilt in the show by you and Robin McKay and Shasta. Hello. I think I said hi to you. Uh, and Judy. Thank you. Judy likes my dress, Balenciaga. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, and Robin. Okay. Okay. It's 13 minutes till the new year in... Uh, in the east, in the east coast. Ugh. Okay, <clears throat> so here's the announcements. There's, there's not many. Have we picked a bag? It's the black one, right? The black one. Yeah. Oh, I thought about putting, like, I put my lipstick in here. You know, so I'm just having fun. You know, this is fun. It's supposed to be fun, right? Um, I put my lipstick in here, and a nail file. <laughs> this nail file was in there from when I last used this purse 9,000 years ago. And then I do have an antibacterial wipe thing, but you know what? I haven't used this since the pandemic started. So that was probably the most depressing moment when I got these bags out of my closet there, my hall closet, because I was like, oh, 
Oh, you had an antibacterial wipe in your purse for when you were going out to a dinner or a party of some kind. <laughs> I mean, really, like, I had no idea. None of us had any idea. If you've got them, yeah. So anyway, uh, 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 yeah, so the black one, right? The black, yeah. Okay, Akil says black. That's all I need to know. Um, oh, but Debbie, Debbie says red. Well, we'll see. We'll see what other votes come in. Okay. The only announcement uh, is that, uh, is that, sorry, that we, uh, wait, there's a show tomorrow night. I mean, it just doesn't stop around here. You know, we have, uh, we have our shows and, and we do them. So tomorrow night at, at 10 PM, these late shows, um, yeah, we're going to hang out. It's a regular show. Get back on the horse. It's 2022 shortly. It's the first show of the year. You know, my grandmother always said that on the first day of the year, you got to do all the things that you want to do in the coming year, you know? And it's a little, I mean, it's actually given me great anxiety in my life because I, I you know, she told me that early on. And so I've always felt like, okay, I have to do everything that I want the new year to be. Because she was like, it sets the tone. It sets the tone. She was from Mississippi. And... So I'm like, okay, I got to exercise, you know, I got to like rest, I got to read, you know. So sometimes I get a little psycho about it and I'm like, whatever I do on this day is what the whole year is going to be like, you know. Um, so, 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 I, so if that's true, I want to do the show. Of course I'm going to do the show. So 10 p.m. Central Time tomorrow night. And we will, uh, yeah, we're going to watch. I spent a lot of time getting ready for this show today. So I hope the, the sneak peek of the quilts and fashion video will be more ready than it is right now, but it'll be, it'll be fine. You'll see it tomorrow night and then I'll work on it and then post it this week on the YouTube. So, um, okay, Molly, okay, Molly says, Akil's now divided on the purse. This is, this is why it takes so long to get ready, <laughs> you know, to go out. Remember that? Because, you know, you, you're like, but this, but this. Anyway. Okay. Hey, Beverly from Wisconsin. Happy New Year to you. Um, so the last thing uh, that I can say, oh, yeah, I just want to tell you that I think it was Annie Dillard, the great writer, Annie Dillard, who says, how you spend your days is how you spend your life. Mm -hmm. How you spend your days is how you spend your life. And I think that's beautiful and true. So it's like, whatever I do tomorrow, you know, it's not one day that kind of sets the tone for everything. It's, it's, it's many days, you know, if you spend your days, you know, playing video games all day and, and that's fine. It's not a judgment call. If you play video games all day and you kind of, I don't know, if you feel like you need some help and you, you just, decide you're just not going to get, you know, it's like how you spend your days, whatever you do in your day, right? That's the, the aggregate of those days is your life. And so what I do tomorrow, like, mm -hmm, but what I, the aggregate of my days is I try to, I don't know, I try to make, I try to make interesting things happen, I guess. I don't know. Um, so that's what I'll try to do tomorrow, right? Um, make interesting things happen. I got another thing of red. I've got, listen, Red is by a nose. It matches the quilt nerd. Uh... How does this work? It's so hard. There. Yeah, well, you know, maybe that's why. Hmm. I like it. So, I, I mean, I'm listening to you. When I don't go out after the show, I'll take that purse to bed. And I'll just hold it. Okay. So, Myra says black. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. See, this is why I need the pole. This is what Debbie says. Red, okay. So you know I told you. So we start every show with a quilt, and it's the quilt behind me. And um, I think, was it Brendan? Brendan was like, if anybody can find a New Year's Eve quilt, it's you. But I, I honestly, I have to give the fates credit for this one because I found this by accident. I was looking for something else. Do you know what this quilt is called? Do you know? Do you know? Well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Oh, and look at this. I added this... Uh, Oh wait, you, now listen, when, when it gets to be like, hey Kelly, hey Sibby. Listen, Sibby, they're sleeping, they're just, they're missing it. Um, 
so listen, watch this. I did a, I, oh yeah, you have to tell me when, if it's getting close, you know, when it's like 10, 50, eight or nine, just everybody flood the chat with like, uh, so I can do, you know, the happy new year sound effect. And, and I, I made another sound effect. Are you ready for this? Hang on, listen to this. Help, help, I'm small. You know, for this moment. Okay, watch. Help, help, I'm small. I'm not, I'm not totally happy with it. Like, I think I wanna like pitch my voice up. So it was like, help, help, I'm small. You know, um, that would be kind of funny, but I thought that would be uh, kind of a fun, kind of a fun thing to do. Okay, so here, so this quilt, this quilt, are you ready for this? It is called New Year's Eve Party. Yes, oh, wow, I'm a floating head. I didn't think about that, hmm. Well, at least I'm a very cool float. Oh my God, I don't know. Oh no, I didn't think about that. Is it weird? Don't tell me if it is. Hmm, well here, why don't we just always do this? <laughs> Um, yeah, so New Year's Eve Party by Ellen Oppenheimer, you know? Um, so, eight minutes, okay, good. Robin says red, oh my god. Ivana, thank you, I'm glad, you, I'm glad you like my little. Help, help, I'm small. Um, New Year's Eve Party, I was, this, it, this is uh, a quilt that I found uh, at the Sakwa website. Um, and I think it's, I think it's perfect. I mean, it's perfect for this moment, of course, but it's fabulous. It's, it's absolutely, I mean, if you didn't know what it was called, you know, would you say, oh, that looks like a New Year's, you know, New Year's party? No, you know, maybe, but it looks like a party. I mean, to me, it looks a little bit like, zesty nachos, you know, or something like that. Like in the best possible way. That is a nacho orange. I, I, I defy anyone to disagree with me. That's a nacho orange, which makes me think of parties, right? Dip. Um, not every party has nachos and dip, but every party should. Um, but it's just whimsical and it's fun and it's bursting with energy and it is called New Year's Eve party. I don't have a year on it, I don't know. Why? But I don't. There's a good reason. Reason probably because, uh, probably because it's. Um, I I lost my train of thought. I lost my train of thought because Judy Judy said Judy is not getting it in YouTube land. Judy says you're not getting it. So you don't get. You don't get the quilt, or you don't get the sa the sound effect. See if when I whenever I go from the whenever I go from this, you know, in the intro to this. I go, help, help, I'm small. Yeah, it's kind of an inside joke, I guess. Well, I don't know. Judy, I, I hope that, I hope that you don't feel <laughs> left behind. Anyway, I'm glad you're here. And, and there are little things, like there's, we're four and a half months into this show, I guess, at this point, And there are little things that are starting to, to be a thing. And uh, we do, I should tell people, it's not gonna happen tonight probably because no, I don't think it'll happen tonight. We have a drinking game on this show. That's right. Uh, it's the uh, That's Not Your Grandmother's Quilt drinking game. Mm -hmm, that's right. Uh, if anybody, if I read on the show live, uh, if I come across anybody in an article or a video saying, these aren't your grandmother's quilts, we take a shot of tequila or whatever you happen to have, whatever spirit you happen to have. And it's happened on this show once before, and I did it. And the tequila's right over there. But we're drinking champagne tonight. That's not happening. Ooh, it's 10.57. I'm watching. I'm watching. Um, Padma says this quilt looks like an abstract Santa Claus all around the edges. I like that. I like that. Look at this leopard print, you know? I haven't really appreciated that. This leopard print is pretty awesome. Is that... I feel like that's new-ish, no, this is definitely in the 80s, right? It's definitely an 80s quilt. Anyway, but I think that's pretty fun. I think that's really exciting to have a new, uh, okay, Judy, oh, thank God. I was feeling bad that you didn't get the inside joke. Judy doesn't see the New Year's Eve. Totally fine. You know, this is an art quilt. This is a quilt made for the wall, not for the bed. That's how you really, it's the most basic definition of an art quilt. And I found this on the Sakwa website 
And oh, and now I'm going to show you a couple other Judy Oppenheimer quilts because I think, well, she definitely has a milieu. So let's see. Let's see these two other quilts that I found by her. Yeah, I mean, I think what it is is it's exuberant. You know, it's an exuberance. It's a, hey, you know, cheers, happy, you know, happy moment. I think that's I think that's pretty much it. You know, it's it's an interpretive thing. Sorry, this is uh, it's not great, this resolution. But this quilt is also by Ellen Oppenheimer, and it's called Kishkas, made in 1989. So you see, she has this vibe. She has this thing. Okay, oh, two minutes. Okay, okay, I'm watching, I'm watching. Let me, here's the thing. Now I, I've got my cell phone, and I'm gonna, oh, that looks weird in the, okay. Um, okay, so, oh, here, see, I've got this. Can you see that? Right there, so I've got that ready. Okay. Um, Oh, and here's something about Ellen Oppenheimer. Just uh, just let me get this. Okay. Oh, and we'll look at the Betty White quilt here in a second. Ellen Oppenheimer studied glass blowing. So the woman who made the quilt I just showed you, New Year's Eve party, and the woman who made this quilt, Ellen Oppenheimer. This is from her, her entry at the Smithsonian. So she's a big deal. So she was born in White Plains, New York. Okay, Ellen Oppenheimer studied glass blowing at college. Oh, God. Okay, oh, God. Uh... Uh, it's 18. Okay. And then, and she designs neon in San Francisco. Her first experience working with fabric. Look, this is called Log Cabin Maze. It was made in 1992. Look at that quilt. Okay, wait. Sorry, Ellen. It's, we gotta, we gotta go. Um, cause it's 30, it's less than 30 seconds to midnight in, on the East Coast. Okay, wait, wait. I can't be small for this. I can't be small for this. Uh, <laughs> Sibby Mac, by the way, says, if you're drunk, you can see the party on this quilt. Just close your eyes. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Happy New Year, East Coast. Cheers. You look fucking great. <laughs> you look really great. I love you so much. And it's 2022. And if we were in a room and there wasn't COVID-19, I would totally kiss you, and I hope that you have an amazing year, and I hope everybody just, just keep it pushing, you know? We can do this, we can do this, okay? So, happy new year, and just, just be good, but don't be too good, you know? So, cheers. There you go. Oh! Happy New Year! Yippee! Happy New Year. Okay. Oh, see? I cried a little bit. Just a little bit. It's gonna happen again. You know? So if you like that, stick around, because in an hour it will happen again. Um, I agree. Best place to be for New Year's. And there's probably a little bit of a delay. Hey, so demented. Um, hey, Hook and I. Hello. Um, slight delay on the chat here and there, whatever, you know, but I see you all and I'm seeing all of the Happy New Year's, uh, and Happy New Year to Deb and Shasta. You got fireworks? It's awesome. It's awesome. Hey, Jean. Very, very, <clears throat> very good. I was, uh, talking to a friend <clears throat> in Canada and <laughs> chatting with the, her and she was, there's a lockdown, uh, in, in Montreal, at least. I forget, <clears throat> forget if it's <clears throat> across the... Commonwealth, but um, <clears throat> just I think just before New Year's, I mean they were they they're doing a lockdown, and so people were uh, shooting off fireworks at like nine o'clock before the lockdown went into effect. Um, so yes, so there you go. We we did our first. What if we go until like two a.m. and then we can wish everybody on the West Coast Happy New Year. I don't know that's gonna happen, but okay. So let's go back to Ellen Oppenheimer, right? Because I got so much content for you. We have to keep. We have to go. And listen, I understand it's late. You know, people are gonna have to dip out. That's totally okay. Some people can't even watch. They're already asleep, and they're gonna watch the replay, and that's okay too. Okay, let's go back to this Ellen Oppenheimer lady because there's just I, it's a very short thing that I have to read, but um, but it's interesting. And somebody just said. Yeah, Quebec has a, cur a curfew. Yeah, quiltish. Hey, Christmas. Hey, Christmas has been shooting off fireworks all night. I'm thrilled to hear it. That's the one thing I can't really make happen. I mean, we could watch 
YouTube videos of fireworks, but I don't know. I'm, I think I think we're the fireworks around here. That's what I think. Um, oh, Jill had lobster and oysters for dinner, and now she's in her sewing room, sewing and nerding. So lovely. I agree. And you know, I've been thinking. Well, no. Okay, let's just let's keep it keep it going. Um, okay, here we go. Help! Help! I'm small. Um, so someone said uh, that they had been to Murano to see glass blowing, or had seen glass blowing. Happy New Year, everybody! I see you coming in. Um, Kelly said, "I see the glass blowing influence in this woman's work after visiting <clears throat> glass factories in Murano." Yeah, that's totally cool. So what did what did it say? It said uh, the Smithsonian Institute, right, has her work in the museum. They have this this quilt, and they have this quilt, Kishka's and. Log Cabin Maze, and this was, Log Cabin Maze was made in 1992. Um, I don't know about Kishka's, but it seems older, I don't know. So Ellen Oppenheimer studied glass blowing at college. She designs neon pieces in San Francisco. Who is cooler than Ellen Oppenheimer? I don't know. Her first experience in working with fabric came after graduation. Her father was throwing out several of his old ties and Oppenheimer reclaimed them, joining the different materials together to form her first quilt. Mm -hmm. uh, she uses the technique of machine inlaying to create her pieces, which, do you know what that is? Have you ever done that? That's new to me. Um, Smithsonian says, uh, machine inlaying allows odd shapes to be incorporated into the design without the stitches showing. Is that like intarsa? Intarsia? Marianne told me how it's pronounced and I forgot it immediately. I don't know why. But we may have to look that up. Oppenheimer's quilts combine, hold on, I'm writing it down. Cause you know, I've got my quilt nerd content plan. I mean, just cause it's New Year's doesn't mean I don't have a clipboard with a form on it. Um, machine inlaying, machine inlaying. Okay, Oppenheimer's quilts combine the vibrant colors with patterns she prints herself. Oh, sorry, combine vibrant colors with patterns she prints herself. Interesting. God, that's a really low res picture. I can't take it. Let's look at, um, let's just look at our, our intro quilt just just one more time. The full, the full thing, okay? And that will be our way that we end with Ellen. Okay. Um, hmm. They often employ a single continuous line. So her quilts often employ a single continuous line that twists and turns through the maze of fabrics, representing what the artist feels are, quote, the convoluted journeys that we take to get exactly where we started. <sighs> mm -hmm. The twists and turns of the fabric Weave through the maze, right? Representing, quote, the convoluted journeys that we take to get exactly where we started. Oh. That's, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. That's, that's a kind of a cool New Year's Eve kind of thought to have. I don't know. I like it. So that's a uh, New Year's Eve party by Ellen Oppenheimer. Very cool. Um, and now, because I said we would do it, Betty White passed. And so, uh, Someone, someone awesome, um, suggested we look at this quilt, which we're going to. That is a quilt, and it is a Betty White quilt. And this is from herstoryonline.gallery. And this quilt was made by, oh, I gotta, I gotta make sure. Okay, yeah. Um, wait, let me catch, catch up on the chat. Isn't that brilliant, Jill? Totally, totally. <laughs> Um, yep, yep, the zigzag, Mother Nature, you called it with Oppenheimer. Um, oh yeah, so demented, looked up uh, machine inlay and, and you think it's reverse applique. Yeah, 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 we're gonna find out, I mean, for sure, but thank you, because that's probably right. Yeah, R.I.P. Betty, so here's here's what uh, this quilt is, is about. Okay, so it's by Birgit E. Ruatsala from Green Bay, Wisconsin. There's somebody here from Wisconsin I just saw. So, mm, I'm drinking the champagne. <laughs> um, okay, 
Um, Betty White, so this is the artist's statement about this quilt. Betty White, born in 1922, has been in the television business since 1950. Besides her television work, Betty had been an animal activist and author. Was an active one. She began her illustrious career in television at a local television station in Los Angeles, where she co-launched her first series called Life with Elizabeth. So interesting, I didn't know this. Which she produced, becoming the first woman producer in Hollywood. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Wow, intarsia. In tar okay, sorry. Thank you. I'm not she was the first woman producer in Hollywood. Didn't know. Didn't know. Hey, Claire. Um, good night, Jean. Good night, Jean. Through the, through the years, this is back to uh, Bridget's artist statement about this quilt that she made. Through the years, Betty played diverse roles, including Sue Ann Nivens on The Mary Tyler Moore Show, to Rose Nyland on Golden Girls. Outside of television, she published many books about her life and work and became an activist for animal rights, especially with the Los Angeles Zoo. Didn't know. Betty has proven herself to be a trailblazing, productive woman all her life. From being the first woman television producer to being an author, actress, animal lover, she inspired those around her and contributed to the work she loved so much. In creating the quilt of Betty, I, says Bridget Rootsala, I chose a black and white palette to represent her early years in black and white television. A pen and ink sketch was done to portray Betty, Betty in her later years. So she drew this thing and then she, that's amazing. What a talented artist. The black background was created with uh, a very faint listing of the shows she has appeared in. Are you kidding me? You people, you people, you're so talented. Um, Overall quilting was done in a fine white thread to give the piece texture and bring the sketch to life. Uh, fabulous. And then the techniques, this is great. Her Story Online Gallery. Let me give you the, the link in the chat. This is really cool. This is, she, you know what, she was a national treasure. And I know she has you know, a cult following like for a long time, but I never really, you know, once again, a quilt gives us a reason to learn about something, you know? And of course it's the occasion of her passing, but you know, because of you watching the show, we're looking at this quilt and we're really learning about her, right? Um, whoa, hang on, what's going on? Okay, um, and, then, and then the last thing here is on techniques, and this is what Brid Bridget says here. In creating the quilt of Betty, I chose a black and white palette. Oh, did I say that? No, I did that. <laughs> um, oh, materials, black uh, and white cotton fabric, black permanent marker, and 70 weight cotton thread. That's what she used to make this. Yeah. If you're a quilt maker, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to buy oil paints and an easel and a canvas. You just need needle and thread and maybe a long arm quilting machine, which costs $85,000. <laughs> um, no, but you know what I mean. You know, it's a, uh... I'm going to be doing that. It's New Year's Eve. I have a lot of lipstick on. I got to touch it up. Um, yeah, you, you can make, you can make art with a needle and thread. And that's why quilting is one of the reasons why it's a pretty special thing to do, right? Okay, thank you for that. Thank you for that. I think it was Faith, was it Faith? Whoever it was, um, thank you for sharing that. I think that's really cool. Okay, so where do we start? What do we do? Okay, here's the deal. Um, it is amazing, isn't it? Um, Let's see, let's see. Okay, so, so check this out. So I did this other thing. I did this other thing. Um, I have, can you, I'm gonna show you this up here. Do you see, you see those little things above my head? Do you see it says, you may not be able to see it too well, but it's quilt nerd favorites. There's these different, I made different desktops. Cause usually, you know, I just have the one desktop and I'm like, pulling things into this frame and then hitting whatever. But I, it's it's risky. It's really risky, actually. It's not funny. I shouldn't be flip about it at all because it's terrifying because it's I'm doing something new tonight where I just have a bunch of different desktops set up on my computer and then I just click the desktop and we go on to the next chapter. I think it's gonna be great. And so we'll see. But I've got these different things for you tonight. I've got 2021 Quilt Nerd Favorites like my favorite shows that we've done so far with Quilt Nerd. 
uh, which I was going to start with, but I feel like now let's make it about me. Or not about me, but I mean, let's make it about the show and like all that stuff later. There's more important things. Um, I've got some quilt shows, 2021 quilt shows to talk about. Quilts in review, just a few. Your quilts, the nerd quilts, and then quilt exhibits in 2021. Now, I, I think, let's go with exhibits first, and then I think I'll probably, I think I wanna do quilt exhibits, and then quilt show, I think, we, I think mm, and then nerd quilts. I, I won't, nerd quilts will not be at the end. I think this is the lineup. I think, yeah, okay, so let, let, let's, just, let's just start here. So let's take a look at quilt exhibits that happened in 2021. There were many, there were so many. We cannot possibly cover them all. We can't possibly talk about all the quilts that were in, um, in these shows, right? For example, um, you know, the San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles. Uh, there's a quilt museum and textile museum in Wisconsin, okay? There are, uh, there's a quilt museum in Colorado. I, there's so many and you should patronize every one of them and, and you should donate even just $20, you know, like all the, all the quilt museums, there's not that many in the United States and you should, you know, you should send them a little money, right? They, they, they museums need us, you know, and so if you're a quilter, it's like, hmm, you know, I'm going to allocate like a hundred dollars a year, right? <laughs> Whatever to, to send to museums and then just, you know, give a little bit. Right. Um, and so the 2021 quilt ex exhibits chapter of this show is far too small, but we gotta do what we can. Okay, but I've got a lot of information to read you and let's begin. Let's just start in. Okay. One of the biggest quilt exhibits that happened this year, Bisa Butler at the, at, the, at the Art Institute. I mean, are you kidding? It was like one of the biggest shows of the year. Period. I'm not talking quilt shows. I'm talking show shows. Bisa Butler portraits at the Art Institute of Chicago, right down the street. Huge, big. I didn't see it because of the pandemic, and then I went to live in London. Um, but <clears throat> I was there in spirit. My friend Heather got to meet her. I think, Heather, I don't know if you're watching. You might be. I still have Christmas presents for you, but you got, you got, didn't you like ride in a car with her? <laughs> You had close contact with Visa Butler. Um, let's just start telling, let's start, like, maybe it's like a fisherman's tale, you know, where it was like, Mike, the fish I caught was this big. It's like, Visa Butler and I hung out. We were, <laughs> we went out till four in the morning. It's crazy. Well, that's the story I'm going to tell about you and Visa Butler. But I'm pretty sure that you, well, you definitely met her, but I think you rode in a car with her. Anyway, so that is a huge deal. She, I mean, she's the toast of the town. Look at this woman and her amazing art. Um... There was, where's my piece of paper? Oh God, I don't know. Um, this quilt is called The Warmth of Other Suns. Bisa, so we did an article about Bisa Butler in Quilt Folk Magazine for the Illinois issue. Yes, she is indeed wonderful. Hey, Sheila. It's great to see you over in YouTube. Um, yes, of course, the National Quilt Museum in Paducah and in Hamilton, Missouri, we have a wonderful museum thanks to the Doan family. So much going on, right, in the exhibits. Um, which is why I'll, I'll try to clip along here. Um, but Bisa Butler was a high school art teacher for a very long time. Um, she started making quilts later in her life, relatively speaking. She's been an art artist, you know, for a long time. But but um, she, I remember reading some interview where she didn't really know, she wasn't familiar with a long arm machine, you know, and then she was, and she was like, this is great. But her works are big. This is called The Princess, 2018. She has these portraits um, of, of black Americans. Well, I know there's, they're Haitian, but I, I'm pretty sure, I, I don't know. Actually, I shouldn't say, I don't know. But her portraits are of um, Haitian Americans, uh, um, you know, people who, who she sees as, you know, <laughs> representation. And I, I mean, she, 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 she makes portraits of people who are beautiful, okay? And her culture is reflected in that, her ancestry is reflected in that, and her portraits are often really big. Um, and there's a picture, yeah, like so she's standing in front of one of her quilts and obviously you can't see the whole quilt 
in the picture. And so you can see they're, they're bigger than life size a lot of the time. Um, and it's just, I mean, sh people do portrait quilts. They do, you know, have, they have, um, there's different face, face quilts and stuff like that. People depict human beings in quilts a lot. But Bisa Butler, there's just something special about, about what she's doing. It's her choice of fabric. It's her placement of fabric. Um, she's, she's just, yeah, she's the toast of the town for a reason. This is called To God and Truth. I think it's 2019. Um, so Bisa Butler is one of the, it's one of the biggest exhibits that happened. It was just, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I have anyway. Okay. Yeah. I think I know what I'm, so, um, Belle, did you see it? Did Belle see it? Is that what she was saying? Oh no, no. Okay. Okay. Um, Hey, Kelly's team is going to the national championship. That's awesome. Roll tie. Um, so the color of the use of color and pattern is legendary. So true, quiltish. So true. Um, I thought she was in the quilt too, right? She looks like it. there's a few pictures. I mean, you have to. I have to pick only so many pictures uh, to show you. But there's several. If you Google Bisa Butler Art Institute portraits exhibit, there's a few like editorial pictures. I think the Washington Post had one of her, and she's like standing. You see her full. You see, you know, the full body and she's standing next to a very large quilt with full bodies of people like this one. And she is, she's dressed in these wonderful fabrics and, and it really does look like she's part of the painting or the part of the quilt, right? It's awesome. Um, and so this, so I ended on this one because it leads us into Fabric of a Nation. Fabric of a Nation, huge, huge deal, big deal in the quilt world and in the art world because Fabric of a Nation, of course, at the Museum of Fine Art Boston, that we couldn't go to this year, we being me and my mom and, and, and Jill, anybody who was gonna be able to join us there for the show, um, it just didn't happen. It's just the way it is. Experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. And uh, we didn't get to see this quilt in person. Some of you did get to see the show. Um, <laughs> Hook and I, Hook and I is like, my only question about Bisa Butler's work is how? <laughs> These are amazing, thousand percent, totally agree. Um, this, this particular work is in, is in the Fabric of a Nation exhibit at the Museum of Fine Arts Boston, okay? So, and this is the quilt on the cover of the book that we've talked about on another show because I have it back in London. And uh, so Bisa Butler made a lot of, she, she did a, made a lot of waves, made a lot of waves. She was in a lot of really cool places this past year. So Bisa Butler had a great year, right? Even if there were parts that were not so great, Bisa Butler had a very good year. So here's another quilt from the, um, the Museum of Fine Art Boston show, Bertha Mextroth. We did a whole, I mean, we did a whole thing. We did a whole show on Bertha Mextroth. I mean, she was part of a, a part of a show. Um, this amazing quilt, Easter, what year? 1933, the Easter quilt. Those are bats. Those are bats. Did you did you see that? I mean, if you watch the show, you know all about those being bats around the edges and the spider web quilting along the edges. And, and it was it's just so wonderful. And it's this Easter quilt, and she was so she was such an amazing person. And her and her she bequeathed all her quilts to the school or something. There was a school she gave them all to, and they just got rid of them, basically. They just sort of let them and they went against her will, her family went against her will. Anyway. It's just it's just a terrible story, but she does have her moment of glory, right? From time to time, when a show like this, like Fabric of a Nation, puts one of her quilts, you know, into view, and we can see her beautiful, um, her beautiful work. Mother Nature, I, they do look like Easter lilies, but then they look like bats. <laughs> That's my interpretation of Easter by Bertha Mextroff. They look like lilies but then they look like bats. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so super lame, super lame. Uh, oh wait, no, no, I, Lauren, I thought you were saying that it's super lame that the people who in Bertha Mextroff's life did not, re did not respect her wishes when she passed. But, but I, then I read, uh, I'm so, Lauren says, I'm so used to having to take the time difference into consideration. I missed the start of the episode. Lauren, that's all good. That's cool. We, what, 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 um, where are you? What time zone? Because we haven't said Happy New Year to the Central folks. That's not happening for another 40, 38 minutes. Yeah. Um, you're just, you're just in time. So yeah, she, Molly, Molly, 
She belongs in the Quilter's biography, 1,000%. Oh, there is so, you know, listen. There's so much happening with Quilt Nerd. I'm serious. I'm, listen. 2022. 2022. 2022. Quilt Nerd, I'm telling you guys, it's going to be big. There's a game afoot. Oh, really? You'll be the first to know about anything that happens. You know that's true. The quilt biography, Quilter's biography, yeah, thousand percent. And Susan R. Michael, I haven't seen you here yet. Molly, you have ideas? Yeah, same. We need to, um, and we will. Uh, Susan R. Michael, I haven't seen her yet. She has, uh, she has, um, <laughs> it is a lot of twos. She has little ones and, you know, Lord knows she, she's a, she's a working woman, but she wrote down a lot of, um, she wrote down the people who were like, I want to help with the Quilter's biography. So I have a list of those names. Um, and if you missed it, the Quilter's biography, I mean, we talk about these amazing quilt makers, amazing quilt makers. And we talked about one the other day and did someone suggest it? Someone suggested it or it came from my head. We have a collective brain here when the show is happening. Anyway, there ought to be a book. Yeah, someone said there ought to be a, a biography of, of this woman or something. And it was like, yeah, let's, let, there should be a biography, a collection, right? A collected biography of like 12 really amazing quilt makers, you know? And, and then you could have volume two and volume three, you know? But we're working on it. We really are. And Bertha Mextroff, 1000% should be in there. Okay. Um, this is part of the, um, I gotta go. I mean, we have so many quilts to look at. I gotta press on. Carla Hemlock. This is called Survivors, made in 2011, 2013. Uh, this is in the Museum of Fine Art Boston show. Uh, beautiful Lone Star. Um, it's called Survivors. She's talking about, you know, Native American heritage and America, different tribal names here. Um, very powerful quilt. This is a powerful quilt as well. It's shaped like a big ball. Um, we talked about this one when we talked about the show Krakow Kabuki Waltz by Virginia Jacobs, 1987. Um, and actually, and so, and so because I didn't get to see the show, grr, um, I didn't get to experience how big it is. This is a, an image from the exhibit. Um, and I didn't know until I saw this picture and I saw it a little while ago, but I didn't know a couple things here. Present in spirit. Excellent. Susan R. Michael is present in spirit. I'm glad. Um, oh, Thursday. Okay. Okay. Susan R. Michael. I'm so glad. Okay. It wouldn't really be right if you weren't, if you weren't here. So I'm glad you're here. Okay. It was you, Jill Alex. It was you. That's right. That's right. Jill Alex. Okay. Um, I've got, I've got it all. It's all, it's all on record. It's all on record. Um, feed puppy is going to fabric of a nation next week. You lucky puppy, <laughs> lucky puppy. Hey, Sheila. Oh, and Reese, Reese. Hey, hey, Reese. Happy new year from New York. Um, I didn't know when I, until I saw this particular picture or pictures from the exhibition that there was this huge star on the other side. I had only ever seen this side of things and I didn't realize it was so huge. I mean, I, I I'm sure I'd seen the measurements of it at some point but I didn't know. I want to see it so bad. Ugh. Oh my God. Oh my God. You guys, that's Susan Hoffman. We looked at this piece. We looked at this piece the other day. This one, you remember this? Look at this. We saw this triptych when we looked, when we did Susan Hoffman. I mean, I knew she was in the Fabric of a Nation exhibit or like I remember that, but I didn't know it was this. That's so cool and look at this. Oh, there's, there's survivors back here. You see back here. We just saw that one. And then what's this? It's Ed Larson. We did a show on Ed Larson. You know, I'm just saying I'm bringing the exhibit to you. That's so cool though, to see the Susan Hoffman. See, you know what? If you're a quilt nerd, this is how you become, a, if you're not a quilt nerd, this is how you become a quilt nerd. And if you're a quilt nerd, this is how you get nerdier. Because you go to an exhibit like this, or you just see a picture and you're like, ah, oh, that's Susan Hoffman. Ah, oh, that's Ed Larson. And, and ah, oh, that's Susan H Hansen. Sorry, hang on, hang on. I wanna get that right, hang on. Carla Hemlock, I don't know what I'm thinking of. And that, that's Carla Hemlock, you know? And so you walk into any show and you're like, ah, oh, 
you know what that is? You know what that is? You know you know about Susan Hoffman? You know what she did? And either you're with a kindred spirit and they're like, oh, God, I want to be like her. Or they're like, Oof. You just can't be, you can't be like snooty about it. You can't be like, well, Susan Hoffman, I happen to know. You just have to be like, oh, you know what? That's really cool. But then you can't say too much. Anyway, you know how to behave. <laughs> um, there's opposite wall. Oh my God. Okay, Jill. Wow. On the opposite, this is from Jill. Jill has seen the show. We were going to see the show together. Jill says, on the opposite wall of the room that we're looking at, there's also a quilt with a bunch of large penises that are 3D. That was dot, dot, dot. Interesting. Lol. Really? 3D? <laughs> I want to see this. I want to see it so bad. Ugh. Okay. Let's just... We gotta move on. We gotta move on. We can't... We can't see all the 3D... <laughs> appendages that we want in life. Okay, so now for something completely different. This is an exhibit that that was, uh, that is still up at the Iowa Quilt Museum. Yeah, the Iowa Quilt Museum in my hometown of Winterset, Iowa. And it's so sweet and lovely and the Iowa Quilt Museum is great. If you've never been there, when you can, take a little, take a trip to Iowa, you know? It's it, John Wayne, my hometown, Winterset, Iowa. John Wayne was born in my town, that's right. Um, the bridges of Madison County. Yes, that's my county, Madison County, Iowa. You can go to the bridge and carve your name in the bridge and contribute to the vandalism that's been happening since the bridge was built in like 1925. There's a bunch of bridges. Sometimes people burn them down. It's true. It happens from time to time. In my lifetime, I think two different bridges, at least one bridge has been burned down by a uh, jilted lover. That's right. So also in Winterset, Iowa is... Uh, the hospital where I was born that doesn't deliver babies anymore, but all of the Fawn's kids were born in that hospital. But there's also the Iowa Colt Museum that my mother helped create. And it is on the town square and Winterset is beautiful. It's great. There's the movie theater on the town square, the Iowa theater. Google the Iowa theater at some point and you will learn the story of how this movie theater on our town square, this old school, awesome, small town movie theater had fallen into disrepair it was closed, it was shuttered for, for several years, and my mom and my younger sister rehabilitated the theater. That's right, they rebuilt the Iowa Theater, and now the Iowa Theater, it's just the jewel of the community. It's so great. Oh, God, my sister is amazing, and my mom's amazing. The Iowa Theater is just, it's just on the other side of the square from the Iowa Colt Museum, and this is the Iowa Colt Museum and an exhibit that happened this past year that goes into the new year called Here Comes the Sun, a celebration of orange, which is, it's just delightful. It's so very, I don't know. <laughs> it's just really sweet. Um, yes, exactly, exactly. We have to carve our name into things. It'll be, yeah, it's like cave painting, right? I mean, it is, it's like I was here, you know? Um, Oh God, Jill, that sounds, they, yeah, I don't know. That sounds pretty scary. Um, the Amanas, yeah, the Amanas. Okay, Molly says the Amanas started in her town before moving to Iowa. Yeah, the Amana colonies. That's the whole thing. We, You can go to Des Moines and do Des Moines things and then drive on up to Amana. See the Amana. There's lots of cool stuff in Amana, totally. Um, and but, 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 how do you get to Discord? Oh, can somebody put an invitation for the Discord in the in the chat, that'd be great. So here's the Iowa Quilt Museum, isn't it lovely? Here's a fun fact. Here's a fun fact about the Iowa Quilt Museum. I told you it's up on the square. Used to be a J.C. Penney department store. I don't know, I'm feeling, you know, the new, I'm the New Year's Eve spirit, so I'll tell you. Well, okay. Well, it's too late now. I bought my first bra at the J.C. Penney store and in this, in this very space, it's true. I mean, it was like, you know, I was a kid, you know, they, it was, that was the only place in town. So my mom took me there and, and there was a whole thing. And you see this upstairs, we'll have a picture uh, of the upstairs here in a second, the mezzanine, if you will. But that's where, you know, they had a bunch of stuff. And I remember it was, it was awful. You know, it was not like 
I'm not telling you that story because it's in any way like cool. It's just, you know, like, well, yeah, I remember all that. But, but they restored this whole building and it's beautiful. Look at this gorgeous museum, the Iowa Quilt Museum. You gotta go. And this exhibit was all about orange and I think it's, it's just wonderful. It's a beautiful, it's small. You can do it in an, you know, less than an hour and you really feel like you've seen all the quilts. It's a wonderful place to, um, thank you for the lols started to really think I crossed the line when I started to tell that story. Maybe I did, let's move on. Um, so um, yeah, you can see the quilts, you know, it's just a lovely place. And then you can go have lunch at the Northside Cafe on the other side of the square and see a movie at the Iowa Theater. But it's just, it's really, I'm really proud of my mom. I'm proud of everybody who works so hard on this museum. And it's not a collecting museum, right? Some museums like the International Quilt Museum, the New England Quilt Museum, San Jose, they collect quilts and so they have this huge collection and they have to, it's so much money, you know, to keep everything uh, together. Other museums are just exhibiting museums like the Iowa Quilt Museum and they just, it's world-class. It's just world-class. Okay, so speaking of the International Quilt Museum and I have to, I have to trot along. Hey, uh, Susan Michael, you, you mentioned here that uh, you enjoy the Iowa Quilt Museum talks. Uh, they do, they have, and you say they're really great and they absolutely are. There are um, textile talks and like, what do they call them, Susan? Like a something chat, but they have amazing guests on to chat with, um, with Megan for a long time. I think maybe she's not there doing that now, but, um, but yeah, there's just wonderful guests. Rod Kirikoff was on, I was on with somebody, but they, it's great. So go to the Iowa Quilt Museum website and check it out. Okay, so then I thought I would do this the International Quilt Museum in Lincoln, Nebraska, they are a collecting museum and, mm -hmm. what time is it? Okay, it's 11.34, I'm watching. They have these amazing exhibits all year, every year. And I thought I'd do a, a, a quick romp through what they did in 2021. I mean, we just, we gotta do it. Okay, so here I have a bunch of, a bunch of notes here, but as I'm seeing, you know, the time, it's like, oh, how much do I tell you? I'm just, I don't know. I guess the people on the West Coast want me to go late so we can do a Happy New Year to you too, right? Hmm. Let's see. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Um, obviously, I'm excited. So here is, so, so this exhibit, okay, was 9-11, um, right? 2021 was the um, 20 year anniversary um, of, hold on, of 9-11, right? The attacks on um, New York City and Washington. The 9-11 attacks, let's put it that way. So this is an exhibit of, uh, and I'll read to you what, what they said, in from the International Quilt Museum. Okay, in times of death and grief, quilts convey without words, messages of solace, solidarity, and support to the receivers. At times, groups use quilts to express themselves as a community of support to others who have experienced loss. In addition, as both objects of art and as stitched documents, quilts convey compelling messages to viewers when displayed in public spaces. Each quilt in trying to make sense of it, 9-11, loss and memorial quilts provides an example of the unique ways that quilts help us process the various kinds of losses we experience. For the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 terrorist attacks, we pause to remember those who have perished in this and other collective personal and community losses and to reflect upon the ways memorial quilts function in our lives. I mean, they're so good. The quilt museum is so good. Okay, good. S. Pepper, we're here for it. Good, I'm glad because we got a lot. I got a lot of stuff to show you. Um, okay, so yeah, I mean these. This is this, they, they do such a good job. I mean, look at this uh, the exhibit, the way it's structured, right? These two, uh, you know, two structures right in the middle, and all of these community quilts and things. It's just, it's just. Uh, it's, it's really great. Okay, so that's, I mean, that's how much I can show you about that one because there's so many others that they did. Um, so this, this is a big deal. So 2021 was also the 50th anniversary. I'm a floating head again. Hang on. Okay. 
the 50th anniversary of the show that changed everything. Abstract Design and American Quilts, 1971, at the Whitney Museum of Art in New York City. Now, it's not the first time quilts were seen as art, and there was a lot of things happening. If you know me, and if you're a real, if you're a real quilt nerd, you know that the Whitney Museum of Art was a landmark watershed event. It was part of a narrative, and part of a whole story, right, of things that were happening in the quilt world in America. But, and so it was, it was, everything's connected, right? But abstract design in American quilts was a really big deal, and it happened in the, in the, in, in the United States. It happened in the Whitney Museum of Art in 1971. This, these are pictures from the show, from the actual show. And we haven't, I haven't done a show on cigar ribbon quilts yet, but don't worry, we will. This quilt is made from cigar ribbons. It was a whole thing. It was a whole trend that people got into. And, uh, hey, Bre Reese, did I already say hi to you like five times? If I did, I meant it every time. So, so it, here's the Whitney Museum. This is the old Whitney Museum of Art. And seeing this picture is kind of like, I don't know, it's crazy because, um, I've been to that, I went, I was at that Whitney for like many times. I love the Whitney Museum. It's all American art, right? And the ceiling is great. Does anybody watch the Marvel? Like, are you all, are you, does anybody watch the Marvel movies? Okay, probably a lot of you have seen Marvel movies because it's basically Hollywood now. So I had never seen a Marvel movie, not one, not a single one. I'm telling you, I never had. I just like didn't care. And I was like, I'm not their customer, you know? But then the pandemic happened. Oh, look, I'm at the Whitney again. The pandemic happened. And, um, you know, I needed something to do. Eric was like, we should watch the Marvel movies. All of them. And I was like, mm, I don't know about that. And, and he was like, no, no, trust me, they're amazing. And I was like, okay. And Eric, you know, you could watch all the Marvel movies like in the order that they came out or you can watch all the Marvel movies in the order of the story, right? Be for example, Captain Marvel was the first movie we watched because Captain Marvel happens, I don't know how it goes, but, but, but Eric had a whole lineup. Every single Marvel movie, you know, chronological. I love those movies. Thank you. <laughs> um, I love them. I think they're amazing. I am so, I, I think Endgame, well, no, no, Infinity War and Endgame and uh, uh, Gu Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2 and um, what are, what's the other, and, and Deadpool. I mean, th these are amazing. Anyway, the point is, is that I'm, I, I haven't seen Spider-Man yet because, you know, pandemic, I'm very mad. I can't talk about it. So this ceiling... <laughs> in the Whitney Museum of Art, the old Whitney Museum of Art, reminds me of the ceiling at the uh, TVA in Loki. So if, if there are any Marvel people out there, and I know that there are, because this is Twitch, <laughs> am, I, am I wrong? I don't think so. I think they modeled the ceiling in Loki after the Whitney. Okay, it's a big digression. Okay. Guardians is your favorite. Of course it is, Susan. <laughs> Rock it. <laughs> I love him so much. Um, Okay, so that is a quilt <laughs> from the show in 1971. Here's the deal. With the Whitney, here you have, it's the first time, it was true, the, the Whitney Museum of Art show, Abstract Design and American Quilts, it was the first time that a major museum, Whitney is like MoMA, it's like the Met, you know, it's huge. A major museum hung quilts on the wall as art. They were not, they were not displayed on, uh, on beds, they were not, um, they were displayed as abstract art. And it was a big deal because people, you know, a lot of people had not seen anything like this. They thought of quilts as X, Y, Z, you know, bed covers, something grandma made, something mom made, something in my attic, you know, uh, something wonderful that I love, you know, but not something that would be, that you would buy a ticket to see, you know, at the Whitney. And so Jonathan Holstein and Gail Vanderhoof, uh, a couple, um, were collecting quilts. They were collecting Amish quilts. Um, well, not all Amish, of course, but uh, Pennsylvania, New England, you know, they were finding these wonderful things. 
and and there was this big show and it was just a blockbuster it was absolutely huge and the, the ramifications of it the influence of abstract design in american quilts it just can't be under un, overstated under, um it's it, it some people credit it with launching the art quilt movement of the 80s because a lot of artists who, who were in New York or who came to New York to see the show saw, hey, Queen Bee, I'm so glad you're, you're following me that now. That's awesome. Appreciate it. Glad you're here. A lot of people who weren't interested in quilts, didn't, under, didn't know about them, didn't think about quilts in this artistic way, in this artistic, like, vibe, were like, oh, Oh, the quilt, right? Like I'm a sculptor, but you know, quilts, man. Like you know, so the, so the quilt started to be a medium that people were working in, and it had been before, but not in the not the way that they, you know, that more people were doing it after the Whitney show. And and I just want to say, I don't think he's watching right now because because well, maybe he is. I don't know, Jonathan. I love you so much, and I. You're so special, and I, I just I just love you so much, and I miss you, and I hope that I'll see you soon in May, and you're one of my favorite people ever, period. You know that. But I'm sending, sending it out across the airwaves on New Year's Eve. There you go. Um, okay, so, so it, was the, it was the anniversary, 50 years, 50 years since this happened, okay? Yeah, it's a great photo, isn't it great? Um, so the International Quilt Museum, oh, here's one more picture, okay. Um, the International, I've, I've looked at all these quilts so many times, like for various different things. Um, they feel like friends at this point, you know? Um, but the International Quilt Museum, of course, did an exhibit. They, there was a, a reboot, if you will, you know, this year for, for the, the exhibit, for the, uh, yeah, uh, for the anniversary of the, of the abstract design in American quilts. And, um, and so, so what I've got for you here, and they, they mounted an exhibit. Uh, I showed you the pictures of the uh, original exhibit because there's a lot of other things that happened at the International Quilt Museum with the exhibit. And one of them was, was this. Okay, so this is a very famous quilt from that show in 1971. It's Joseph's Coat, okay? Uh, it was on the cover of the catalog um, that was sold at that time. Uh, here we go. Okay, so one of, so they had these auxiliary exhibits. If you just tuned in, we're doing the Quilts in Review 2021. We're in the exhibit, quilt exhibit uh, section. So so this, so they did, they did a, a, a an auxiliary exhibit, several, and one of the ones that they did was called Journey to Japan. So abstract design in American quilts at 50, Journey to Japan. Listen to this. Immediately after abstract design in American quilts closed in October, 2021, hang on, I don't wanna be a floating head, and that's fabulous, wow. Okay. Um, after it closed in October of 71, venues around the world requested to borrow the exhibition from collector curators Jonathan Holstein and Gail Vanderhoof. The quilt's most distant trip was to Japan in 1975 to 1976. It was a journey that would produce reverberations for the next several decades. Hold on. I just got to do that. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Wait, hold on. Oh, that's really fun. Okay. Happy New Year. Um, It was a journey that would produce reverberations for the next several decades. Japan has its own long history of textile art, and American-style quilts were not completely unknown there. However, Holstein and Vanderhoof's exhibitions introduced quilts to the Japanese public in a big and splashy way, appearing at major Tokyo and Kyoto galleries, as well as in smaller ones across the country. Isn't that great? It's so cool. Thousands flocked to the exhibitions, which helped spark widespread interest in quilt making. But, uh, budding, <laughs> budding Japanese quilt makers honed their skills quickly, and by the 1980s began to enter and win major U.S. and international competitions. They mastered American-style quilts and also developed a uniquely Japanese uh, wa, so w -A, wa, Japanese quilt style. In the process, they helped expand and diversify the global quilt landscape. For Journey to Japan, 
the International Quilt Museum commission, commissioned quilts from ten of they commissioned quilts from ten of uh, ten, ten of today's top Japanese quilt artists and teachers, some of whom saw the Holstein Vander Hoof quilts in the 1970s. Each artist selected a piece from the original abstract design and American quilts uh, exhibit and responded to it using her own techniques, materials, and aesthetic approach. The quilts in the exhibition are from the permanent collection. Okay, so this quilt, the reason I have this here is because this was the inspiration for this quilt. This quilt is from Yasuko Saito from Tokyo. It's made of silk, cotton, linen, Japanese handmade paper, washi, and I have washi tape on my ears because I couldn't find my earrings. Didn't even think about that. I just found the washi tape. Anyway, this is this is the gift of tonight. Uh, it's machine pieced and quilted. Here's what it says here about this quilt. Yasuko Saito's quilts are often characterized by intricate patchwork contained with wide sweeping arcs of color. Another unique quality of her work is her use of washi handmade paper along with hand and custom dyed fabrics. About this quilt, Saito says, quote, the year 2020 is in a state of emergency because of the coronavirus disease. With what's going on right now, I worked with the theme of rainbow in order to express my hope for the return of dreams, happy and fulfilling life, and fun. Wow, that's so cool. That's so great. That's so Hey, Noel, Noel or Noel and Sylvia. Hi, Sylvia's coming in from Alaska. Girl, I'm really glad you're here, both of you. So I want to just say, you know, I want to go back here, right? So the, the inspiration quilt was, was Joseph's coat, right? I mean, a quilt from, I, I, didn't, I didn't put the year on this, but you know, it's going to be turn of the century. Let's just call it turn of the century, 20th century. Um, and Yasuko Saito did this. It's called Joseph's Coat. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's called Movement Number 89. Movement 89, okay? So this is this journey to Japan. This is so wonderful at the, at the International Quilt Museum. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Okay, so there's this one, famous quilt, okay? Super famous quilt from that show, A Log Cabin. You know, doesn't get much more simple and gorgeous than this. And I don't know if you feel this way, but I love making log cabin quilts. I've made a number of them, you know? I really have, I've done, and I like to paper piece them. That might sound crazy to you, but I that's the best way. It's the best way to do it. Hey, Dee Marie. Dee Marie, did I say hi to you already? I don't know. Um, I hope you got my email. You're ridiculous. Um, yeah, this is, it's so gorgeous, right? Um, so, so here, here, okay, let's, okay, let, now what about this one? So here's your, here's your, it does, it's just red and white. Red and white, log cabin, perfect. So what did the artist do? Oh, what? Look at this thing. It's a kimono. They're always showing up, but this one, this one, this is by e Aiko Okano, E-I-K-O, Aiko Okano, okay? Also from Tokyo. Silk polyester machine pieced hand quilted. It's called It's a Beautiful Day, Volume 16. It's a Beautiful Day, Volume 16. Oh, it's so great. This is my favorite show ever. Okay. Um, here's what the, the International Quilt Museum says about this piece. This uchikake, okay, which is a wedding kimono, uchikake, U C H I K A K E, uchikake. Um, Wedding kimono shaped quilt is the latest in Aiko Okano's uh, It's a Beautiful Day series. This is part of a series. Three others of which are part of the International Quilt Museum collection. Mm -hmm. Echoing the diagonal stripes in the original log cabin quilt, Okano leaves out the upper left shoulder stripe. What? Hang on, hang on, hang on. In order to emphasize the subtle beauty of the white fabrics. Ugh. Okay, yeah, we gotta look at the whole thing. Look at that. Oh, oh my God, that's so great. 
left out the upper shoulder stripe in order to emphasize the subtle beauty of the white fabrics. Check. O'Connell felt like her quilt selection was foreordained, noting while she was constructing her version, quote, making my own quilt inspired by a Holstein Vanderhoof quilt that I admired like the Bible. This seems like my fate. I am working on my quilt as if it was decided a long time ago. There, I think that's the first time I've used the quilt church sound effect. And obviously it's when it needed to be played. Making my own quilt inspired by a Holstein Vanderhoof quilt that I admired like the Bible. <laughs> I mean, are you serious? Wow. Sylvia, you gotta do a log cabin with paper piecing. It's the best way. Just cut long strips and they just sew them and cut them and sew them and cut them rather than like cutting all these different sizes of logs. It's just, it takes too long and they get stretched out and how do you organize them? You gotta do it like that, you gotta do it. Um, yeah, it is superb, Myra, it's superb. <laughs> Ugh. You know what, it's interesting, there was some discussion about, yeah, discussion about um, cigar ribbon quilts, right? I mean, this is silks, right? So it has that same, I mean, that shiny quality, that silk shiny quality i know it's wonderful it's just wonderful yeah superb superb okay okay there's one more i got one more no no i've got two more okay oh here. um you know nerds if the people who sent me I'll, I'll do the nerd quilts next because i i mean i want you to see your quilt right on the show i know you can watch the replay but i asked at the last on the last show you know if you want to send me a quilt that you made in 2021 i'll show it on the show and I have a number of them with the stories, you know, that people shared with me. So I'll do that next because I don't want anybody to feel like, oh, I stayed up all night and I didn't get to see my quilt, <sighs> which is why I have to keep going here. Okay, so this is Schoolhouse. This quilt is called Schoolhouse, you know, 19th century um, unidentified artist, right? So this is a quilt that was in abstract design in, design in American quilts. It's a great schoolhouse. Like there's a million schoolhouse quilts and then there's this one. Like it's pretty great. And so... Who did what? Oh, Kumiko Fujita, also in Tokyo. Not everybody is from Tokyo, but the first three have been. Uh, it's all machine pieced and quilted. It's all cotton, hand appliqued. Sorry, it's hand appliqued as well. Kumi Kumiko Fujita's training as a graphic designer is evident in her bold, crisply executed shapes and simple color palette. Fujita usually prefers to work with abstract designs, but for Journey to Japan, she says, quote, I intentionally chose the red, black, and white, inspired by the black roof and red walls of the classic American schoolhouse. She sees the schoolhouse, I think the outer walls, right? She sees this, unquote, she sees the schoolhouse as a world of imagination, while with children studying and playing in and around the building. Wow, it's so cool. It's so cool. Oh, you know, the thoughtfulness of people who, who make art and who make quilt art. It's just, it just never, it's just never old. It's not, you know, it's, it's about the quilt, but it's about what she thought of and what she was inspired by and, and how she put it together and her history and her background. She's this graphic designer in Tokyo, you know, and she's she makes quilts and it's just, quilts are about people, you know? It's about people and art and making things and it's about our humanity. It's not just about the quilt itself, right? It's so much more than that, which is why, which is why it's just, it's just fun to do this show with you all. Molly says, it makes my heart happy. I love the stripy clothes, yeah. Yeah, the stripy clothes, the stripy clothes. And then this grid, you know, the grid quilting. Like we see so many quilts with this ornate, intricate quilting, but you know, the form and the function go together. This, the grid quilting is perfect. It's simple and it's perfect. Okay, one more of these. So this is uh, a Rob Peter to pay Paul. We talked about that kind of quilt before. Um, Christmas says that the, the schoolhouse one is great and you wanna see if there's a print for sale. It's a good 
question. Yeah, I don't know if the IQM, if the Quilt Museum does prints or not, but maybe she does. Anyway, you should definitely investigate. It's fabulous. Okay. Um, Rob Peter to pay Paul. I usually think of this particular pattern as like a, with a curved seam, you know, the block with the curves, but this is different, but it's still the same idea, which is that you're taking a color from one block and using it from another. Okay. It's too late in the evening. Oh God, what time is it? It's 11.57. <gasps> okay. Um, anyway, anyway, so this is a Rob Peter to pay Paul. Let's look at the next quilt really quick. So th look, this is the, this is what the, the quilt maker did. Ki uh, Kaiko Go Goke, Kaiko Goke uh, from Sendai, Japan. Kaiko Goke's meditation on the original Rob Peter to pay Paul quilt recreates an updated, richly colored and spontaneous version of the traditional pattern. When Goke first began quilt making 50 years ago, she focused on what she calls picture quilts made with figurative applique because she says, quote, I didn't want my quilts to look similar to other quilt makers work, unquote. Later, she embraced traditional pieced patterns, but only by approaching them extemporaneously without templates and by cutting and placing hand dyed fabric fabrics directly as she works. A thousand percent. I am 100,000 percent with Keiko. I don't want my quilts to look like other people's quilts either. I mean, I don't know. I should say rather I want them to look like me, you know, this is great. I think maybe this has to be the background for the uh, New Year's Eve cheers. Okay, okay, it's 11.59, oh God. Nah. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, we got, we got less than a minute. Okay, oof, the tension is killing me. Okay, hang on, hang on, okay, one second. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna get big. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Three, two, one. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Cheers, everybody. You know, I said it before. I'll say it again. Uh, I love you. I do. I love you. And and we gotta keep going. We gotta just. We gotta keep going. And and. Look at what we did in 2021. Look at all these beautiful quilts and this show started and that's so cool. And, and 2021, pe people had babies and they got married and it might not have looked like what we thought it was gonna look like, but like life goes on and it's great. Oh, can you hear, can you hear? There's people cheering outside. Oh, that's so great. Oh, I moved. I moved to go to go say Happy New Year, but I don't want to be do something cringy, you know. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna chill out. But I can hear people on the street, you know, cheering Happy New Year, and and I just, I, I don't know. I felt really, I felt really a lot for everybody lately, you know. It's so, it's so hard. We've been through some hard stuff, and it's still hard, and it's like harder right now than it's been. And I know, I know, I get it. I get it but we can do this, we can do it. And 2022, now I hear a lot of police sirens. I love living in a city, that's something good. That's something great. <laughs> it's, it's, it's where I wanna be, you know? And we can do this. And it's 2022 and 2021 is behind us. And so let's, let's keep it pushing, let's go forward, celebrate, be together, let's be together. We're together right now, you know, it's good. I love people who go woo on New Year's, you know? <clears throat> Happy New Year! And soon we're gonna hear this. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> Happy New Year. Oh, Robin, you could hear them? Ah, uh, that's great. That's great. <sighs> oh, and Sylvia, Sylvia over on YouTube, she's got, she's got three hours until it's New Year's, so. 
Sylvia, I'm going to try my best, but we'll see. Hug the dog. Hug the dog? M. Hicks says hug the dog. I want a dog so bad. I've wanted a dog for so long. One day. We're moving around a little bit too much these days, me and Eric, but one day soon we'll, we'll have one. Um, if we get him in London, we're going to call him Watson. Well, we'll see. Okay. <laughs> Word and Bernard says, Happy New Year. I'm drunk. <laughs> That's great. I'll, I mean, I'm going to refill my glass. I was going to refill my glass before, but I didn't get there in time. But it'll happen. Um, I'm very up. Okay, so so but, but let's get back to this. We got it. We have so much. We have so much to do. We have so much to do. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, love this phone. Okay. So we're we're still at the quilt museum. Okay. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit because we cause I'm gonna go a little bit faster. But they did a show called uh, that was Am Amish quilts. It was just well, it was called something more interesting than Amish quilts. But they had some one just a wonderful exhibit of of Amish quilts. Maybe it was because you know um, many of the um, quilts that Holstein and Vanderhoof collected were you know were Lancaster, Lancaster, Pennsylvania quilts, a lot of Amish quilts, you know, were collected. And, and these Amish quilts, that are so, they're simple. Uh, sorry, I should say they are um, sort of the fundamentals of great graphic design are present in, in, in Amish quilts. I mean, they just, they're these solid colors, the... Um, the bold shapes, you know, big shapes, small shapes, but they're 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 very graphic, you know. Sometimes people use that word graphic, and I don't really know what they're trying to say by that. But we know, you know, we know what it means. They're geometric. They are, um, um, you know, ninety degree angles, and and this is a Chinese coins quilt, which is very classic design. Uh, Amish bar quilts, you know, really um come up a lot diamond in a square all this stuff so so and and the whole aesthetic of the amish quilt which is so specific it's really specific if you know about quilts in america you know an amish quilt a mile away and the aesthetic comes you know from their cultural uh from their culture which is a culture that uh champions simplicity and uh the amish people are it's an anabaptist christian like sect i think it's sect and it's about, you know, keeping like adornment, you know, adornment is, is not so great, right? Because it takes time away from your relationship with God and uh, work that is unnecessary is problematic because you should be spending the time that you have, you know, producing things that are that glorify God and all this. And so, you know, there's a lot more to say about it, but basically, you know, um, uh, the, the fabrics are, are are plain, right? There's not prints, not not always, or sometimes, but there's solid color fabrics and um, you know these jewel tone colors. A lot of the fabric was hand dyed. A lot of it's dress weight wool. Okay, so a lot of wool quilts. But what's interesting about the Amish quilts is that there's often this really ornate quilting. So you have these simple shapes and simple colors, or you know really rich wool colors that kind of you know stay in a particular palette but then you have this really wonderful um quilting you know feathers and all this so it's like those amish ladies they got their they got their quilting on you know they got their quilting on oh and felt pu feed puppy <laughs> lives an hour south of lancaster so inspiring oh yeah and you know here's an interesting fact about the amish quilts a lot of them um <laughs> sylvia is not gonna make it <laughs> for another three hours i don't think i will either it's okay um the Amish uh, quilt makers, and I think I've mentioned this on the show, it's like kind of the coolest thing I know about Amish quilts, so I'll probably say it a lot until I learn more about Amish quilts. But um, machine pieced, a lot of the, the quilts that were made um, in Lancaster, you know, in the mid 19th century up until today, but um, machine pieced because the the engine, you know, the electricity kind of thing for like the hardcore Amish folks. Mennonites are different. But um, but a treadle machine does not have a motor. So I learned this from a curator there uh, at Lancaster, but, but they would machine piece the quilts and then hand quilt them. 
That's interesting. And as far as the myth about, there's a story that gets told that uh, Amish folks would sew uh, on purpose a mistake into their quilt because only God is perfect and they didn't want to, you know, there's sort of a humility kind of thing that they wanted to do. Um, there's, as far as um, uh, Yannick and Smucker knows, there's there's not, this wasn't really a thing. It's kind of a myth that gets told. However, Padma, I think it might have been Padma who said, Padma, there you are. Um, <laughs> with another with another very interesting uh, factoid or, or uh, alleged factoid. But I feel like it was Padma, somebody said that, or maybe Myra said that um, you asked a friend of yours and said, you know, people say different things. So maybe some Amish quilters did sew a little flub into the quilt, you know, a little, a little Easter egg. Um, but, but Padma says more, inter more interestingly still, um, is it true that the colorful fabrics come from their underwear? <laughs> Uh, I always heard that they wore the dark gray, blue, black colors, but were allowed to have colorful underwear, or is that an urban myth? Somebody needs to answer this question. I've never heard that before. I love that. That's great. I hope it's true. If anybody knows, you, you have to tell me. Okay, and now for something completely different. Here we go. This, okay, so we've left Amish. Obviously, we're leaving Amishville. Um, this is a quilt by... <clears throat> Amy Meisner. The International Quilt Museum did a pop-up. Do you hear? Do you hear the, the horns? I love it. I love collective joy. It's so cool. You know, one of the happiest days of my life, of my whole life, was the day the Cubs won the World Series in Chicago in 2016. This city was, um, the city was, was alive. Like I had never seen it before. I mean, I don't, I don't watch baseball. I don't care about baseball, but my sister and I, my younger sister, Rebecca and I were listening to the game, you know, on the radio that night. It's a whole story. I won't go into it all, but, but when they won, the whole city lit up. I mean, they hadn't won in 108 years. It was like, it was like the rapture. It was so awesome. It was so awesome. I mean, I just, and I, everybody, it was like a ticker tape parade outside that moment that they won. And it was like double overtime. And like I learned about what that even meant. And it was, it was just, it was physically difficult to be in that moment when they were about to, and it was just so close. And and then they won and, and everybody leaned out. I was living in the South Loop at that time and every, in a, on a floor 16, you know, my condo building and everybody le leaned out of the windows and, and you know, it was like waving towel and the whole city was so awesome, it was so great. And the next day, I think they did a parade and it was the same thing and I could see uh, uh, Michigan Avenue from my window, you know, cause I was right down there downtown and, and I saw the bus go by, you know, far away, but I saw them and it, it was just, it was so great. The whole downtown, it was interesting cause later, you know, in 2022, George Floyd protests shut down all everything downtown. And it was just such a different moment, but, but you know, the whole city just, it just stopped to celebrate that our team had won, you know, that, the Cubs had won. Sorry. Okay. Amy Meisner. Um, the reason, yes, and, and so Robin says that she loves Amy's work. I do too. What did I say? There's the cops. Um, I love Amy Meisner's work too. The International Quilt Museum did an exhibit of her work, and I was going to pull other quilts, obviously, to show you from the exhibit, but Robin, I love Amy's work too, a lot. And so I, I'm not, I'm just giving you this one for now because we're gonna do a whole thing on Amy because Amy needs time on Quilt Nerd, okay? She needs time on Quilt Nerd all to herself. So I'm not gonna show you anything more, but this is called Mater Familias by Amy Meisner in 2017. Uh, so yeah, so, so we're gonna do, we're gonna do a whole thing on Ms. Meisner, okay? Which is good because 
Okay, wow, this, this is really cool. Check this out. So this is David Hornung. They did a, um, an exhibit on his work called Blue Light. This is International Quilt Museum, okay? So Cyanotype Collage by David Hornung. Qu this is from David, quote, my involvement with the cyanotype process began in the summer of 2014 while I was teaching a collage workshop at Anderson Ranch in Colorado. A fellow instructor working in the next uh, studio incorporated cyanotype into her experimental drawing curriculum. Her students placed objects and film negatives on photosensitized paper for brief exposures to the Colorado sun. As I watched them work, it occurred to me that one could also make cyanotype prints with paper cutouts. I proceeded to cut images of figures, buildings, plants, and animals out of opaque and translucent paper and organized them on clear acetate. I was essentially constructing photo negatives with scissors and tape. In 2019, I began to make cyanotype collages. By col cutting up misprinted cyanotypes I had accumulated over the previous year previous four years and reassembling them into new compositions. This approach reminded me of quilt makers who recycle scraps of printed fabric to construct fresh compositions. Indeed, my interest in collage parallels a long fascination with traditional quilts, especially those featuring pictorial applique. Thank you. Making these collages, I felt connected to those pictorial quilt makers. Isn't that interesting? Hey, Char Charles, Charles, it's so good to see you. Happy New Year to you, Crafts for Others. You're a gem. Uh, isn't that interesting? David Hornung, right? Here's one more. Look at this. So this is, this is a collage artist or a, you know, a printmaker um, who is inspired by quilts. You know, this show, this show, I'm telling you, this show, you don't have to be a quilt person. You can be an art person. You can be a curious person. In all the ways you can be curious. And look, this, this isn't a quilt. This isn't a quilt, this is a collage. But the person who made it sees quilts and looks at quilts as art, understands their importance, and then incorporates the sensibilities, the, you know, the form into his work. And aren't we glad he does? Because this is awesome. Okay, so that was an exhibit that the International Quilt Museum had. Okay, 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 look, um, this is great. This is great. I, I, this is, oof, there's just one more. I think there's just one more. Yeah, okay. So this one, this is the best one. I saved the best for last, I think, okay? And then we'll move on. I think there's even one more exhibit, but we gotta move on. So, this one, this is a, we've seen this quilt before, Nora Ezel, right? We looked at her before, um, <clears throat> and she's amazing. Uh, a quilt maker from the American South. This was part of an exhibit called Bold Statements Responding to African American Quilts. Let me tell, let me just read this to you, okay? They're still honking. They are 15 minutes after the new year, but that's fine. Um, I love the honking. They can do it all night. No, they can't, but they can do it for like at least an hour. Okay. So this is from the information they have from the International Quilt Museum on this exhibit, Bold Statements Responding to African American Quilts. In this second annual collaboration with Lincoln's NAACP Youth Council, the International Quilt Museum is featuring a virtual pop-up, okay? because this is 2021, right? That pairs the work of African-American quilt makers with responses from local students in Lincoln Public Schools. Hold on. I'm gonna get big just for visual interest. Okay. Um, the students examine quilts by Sarah Mary Taylor, Nora McCohen Ezel, Nora Ezel, Mary Maxdian, Yvonne Wells, who we love, and Faith Ringgold, and created reaction statements. I'm gonna read to you some of these students' reactions to these quilts. It's Priceless, okay? Um, they crafted, crafted reaction statements that explore ideas of design, color, and emotion, as well as connections to their own life experiences. 
Um, many of the quilts in this exhibition are part of the Robert, Robert and Helen Cargo collection, which focuses on African-American quilts and quilt makers of the Deep South, especially those from Alabama. As we encourage the students to engage in close viewing of these quilts through high resolution images, so too we encourage the audience to visit these quilts on the linked individual archive pages to better enjoy their vibrancy, texture, and detailed craftsmanship. Okay, check this out. So here's what a couple students said. It was hard to pick these for you all because they're so good. Um, okay, hold on, I'm small. Um, here's what, some, here's what uh, Zachariah, who was in sixth grade, said about this quilt. Quote, the shape in the middle makes a star and it makes me think of a turtle shell. <laughs> I can also see many, many colors and it has a pattern. Oh, cool. Oh, this is great. Noel, uh, Noel says uh, that you took a class on cyanotype years ago as a photographic technique. It never occurred to you to develop it into quilts. How did he get those colors onto fabric? Noel, this is your next thing. This is 2022. Cyanotype, you know, um, sun dyeing fabric, like, you know, amazing. Good night, Sibby. Sibby, I'm so glad you came by. Happy 2022. It's gonna be a great year. You're very nerdy. You're very welcome here. Okay, so isn't that great, it's this little guy? Okay, here's, here's uh, Emily in grade 11. Quote, I definitely feel a sense of comfort and happiness when looking at this quilt. I love the movement and colors chosen and can imagine it as a real stained glass window with light refracting through, the kind that you would find in a cathedral. Blam. So good. Okay, let's, let's see what the next one is, okay? I just love these students. Oh wait, no, sorry. Okay, well this is one of my favorite quilts of the whole year that we looked at on Quilt Nerd. It's called Going Home by Yvonne Wells, 1987. And of all the, the quilts that I got uh, quotes from students to read, I, I missed this one. I don't know how, I don't know how, but this was in the exhibit and it's a, it's a perfect quilt. It's a perfect object, okay. Um, so this is Mule by Mary Maxtian, and here's, here's what a couple students said. Um, this is amazing. This is from Ann, grade 12. Quote, the first thing that attracted my eye was the pouring of the colored cubes from the middle section to the bottom right section. The, pour, the pouring, pouring of the colored cubes. It's so brilliant, brilliantly put, right? They are poured, it's beautiful. Okay, it reminds me of the glitch art effect that is really popular right now. I like the simple black shape to symbolize the mules. It balances out the complexity and busyness in the background. Yes, yes it does. <laughs> yes it does, and, and like it reminds me of the glitch artifact, glitch artifact that's really popular right now. I'm like, Anne, please let me know what's going on. Quiltish, Quiltish, good night. Happy New Year. Sorry I missed you. Hope I didn't miss you. Okay. Um, yeah, brilliant. Okay, and then this, this. Zirion, grade five, says, quote, it makes me think of it is raining down confetti and there's a bunch of pinatas. Great. And then this one is the best one. Emily says, quote, all the different colors in the background are so much fun and really highlight the outline of the different mules. I used to have a couple donkeys, which are similar to mules, and I think this quilt really represents their spirit well. They definitely give a lot to people." Unquote. Amazing. Amazing. Whew. Yes, they do. They do give a lot to people. Okay, here is Pinwheel, also by Mary Maxian. Okay, beautiful. Um, Zirion, again, grade five, says, quote, it makes me think of I'm walking in a room full of giant diamonds. Diamonds because it has a kind of crystal shape and the colors are bright. Great. And on grade 12 says of this work, quote, this piece makes me think of a kaleidoscope. It looks like if you used one to look up at the sun. The minimalist art style makes me feel like it should be classified as modern, but the color scheme and pattern feels familiar and gives off a warm energy. 
do better than that. And then, I think I've just got one more here. Yep. Bird Quilt by Sarah Mary Taylor. We're going to talk about her too. I got it. Yeah, I've got a folder on her already. So this quilt by Sarah Mary Taylor. Um, mm -hmm. Zachariah, grade six, says, the birds on this quilt remind me of when I wake up in the morning and the birds go to one branch and sit there. It's great. It's great. Um, and then from Ja, it's J-Z-A, Ja Neva, grade 12, a senior. He says, I like how each bird is different. They're all either a different color in the grouping or they are in a different position in each block. In a way, it shows that not only are birds different from each other, it can show that people are different from each other too. Yeah, totally. A nun maker says, I love their insight. You can definitely tell who's had an art class. A thousand percent. I say a thousand percent a lot. Happy New Year, Robin. Happy New Year. Yeah, Sarah Mary Taylor is great. I actually have a sketch by Sarah Mary Taylor. I bought it. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, no, no, no. What am I doing? Okay. Hold on. All right. So, so what have I got here for you? I, I, I want to, I've got some Faith Ringgold. I've got some other things. I mean, it's all so great. I'm going to, I'm going to skip to this, this last one because we just have to, we have to move on. Here's the point is, is that the International Quilt Museum has a lot of amazing exhibits all year round. And some of them are online and some of them, most of them are in person. And I love that place. I love that place. And you can see why, you know, Here's the last one. I just have two slides or two pictures for you. It's from an exhibit called Di Diverse Traditions, South Asian Quilts, okay? And it says, South Asia is rich in quilt making traditions. Did you know? There you go. South Asia is rich in quilt making traditions. Women have made quilts in this region for centuries and have used them in a multitude of ways as bed covers, seating mats, tent panels, and dowry items. Some of, they have an amazing collection of South Asian quilts blow your mind well yeah varying techniques color palettes and formats can be found among different ethnic and regional groups and certain styles can help identify where a quilt was likely made in this group of indian and pakistani quilts from the international quilt museum's education collection we look at how the techniques of applique piecing and quilting are used among diverse south asian communities oh, beautiful so this quilt is a raleigh quilt probably made in Cholistan, Punjab, Pakistan, between 1950 and 2000. It's cotton blend, hand appliqued, pieced, embroidered, and quilted. And the one on the right is a Raleigh quilt, also made in Cholistan, okay, Pak Punjab, Pakistan, around the same time. It's cotton, okay. Um, both of these examples of South Asian applique are from the southern part of Pakistan's Punjab province in the Cholistan Desert. It might be surprising that quilts are used in a desert, but nights can be quite cold in that environment. And quilts like these are used for more than just keeping warm. They function as comfortable floor seating, children's hammocks, that's great, doorway coverings, and home decor. Quilts from the Cholistan Desert are known for a tan, brown, gold, and burgundy color palette that harmonizes with the arid and muted natural surroundings. Fabulous. I love this one. I mean, this is just like, forget it. It's fabulous. It's so great. Okay, and then one more, and then we're going to go to our next thing. Um, there's a Raleigh quilt on the left, made in Lower Sindh, Pakistan in the second half of the 20th century. And then on the right, a Kantha quilt made in West Bengal in India between 1925 and 1975, okay? And there's a, this starts with a question. Good night, Al Good night, Jill Alex. You're fading, I get it, I know. <laughs> don't let your big toes, sleep tight, don't let your big toes fight. That's good, that's good, that's good advice. Um, okay, so, so, this starts with a question here. Are these pieces quilted, woven, or embroidered? That's a bit of a trick question. In the state of West Bengal, India, and the province of Sindh, Pakistan, over 1,000 miles apart, many people make whole cloth quilts, which do not have any piecing or applique. Bengali women make their kantha quilts with old, wrapped sari garments. Who just said that? 
who said that yesterday when I was going on about, you know, the thing I'm always going on about, you know, quilts being used for garments. Who, was it Shasta? I think it was. Was it you? Who said like, sorry, you know, um, Coptic quilts are made from old saris. It's really great. I saw the screenshot I took of it and believe me, I read it. Um, okay, so uh, Bengali women make their Kanta quilts with old wrapped sari garments, which are traditionally white with a colorful woven border. They use plain white threads to apply simple running stitch. I'm gonna go over here, sorry, sorry. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. um, with simple running stitch quilting to the background, but they pick apart and reuse threads from the sari's colored border to create co more complex designs. These designs often imitate the woven structure of the original border itself. Unlike Bengalis, the Sami people of Sindh, Pakistan usually choose a dark, often black background for their whole cloth quilts. They use an impressive array of decorative stitches to hold the layers together, meaning their embroidery also serves as the quilting. It, great. I mean, it's just great. It's great. That's the quilt museum. Oh my God. Okay. Look at that. Wait. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do your quilts because, because we have to, because we need to. I need a chip. Crisp. Ah. All right. I really need this. Oh my God. All okay. right. So, sorry. I asked you all if you wanted to share quilts that you made with me to share on the show. And a number of you did. So we're gonna look at them. You're all extremely talented. And some of you, most of you wrote a little something with your, um, your, your entry. Someone, a couple people were like, uh, here's my submission. And I don't think I told, told you all that like, no submissions. It's not a, you know, <laughs> anyone who sent me something would, would have their show or have their quilt on the show. Of course, of course. So. Let's take a look at some of the quilts you made in 2021. All right. Look at this. Okay. So, oh no. Are they not in order of my paper? That's fine. That's fine. That's okay. I don't care. I know what's going on. I know, I know what, what, what this is. Hold on. Hold on. Yes, this is Belle. Oh, it's Belle. My first viewer has the first quilt of this section. This is, Belle made this, okay? And Belle says, quote, you mentioned to email you pictures of one quilt we made in 2021, and here's mine. These are, these are our nerds, people. Belle says, it's the anthology quilt, and it tells my story through fabric. It's large, 70 by 80, so I included yeah, I love it too. I included some close-up pics to see better. I've got a couple of those. The pattern is by Southern Charm Quilts, and I had a friend do the amazing custom free motion quilting for me. Look forward to Twitch here on the last day of the year. Belle, I see you. I've learned so much quilt history from your show. Many thanks. Awesome. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. An anthology quilt. I like that a lot. And I mean, it's just the piecing, look, this fussy cut little uh, butterfly in here. It's wonderful. I love the way you've got like the different whites, Belle, like you've got this, you know, white on white print and you've got this little slightly, you know, floral print. I love mixing whites. I think it's a great way to do white in a quilt and mix them up. It's just gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. There's another one here. I, and I love this too. I love the feet on the quilt. Like whenever I see a picture of like the Kardashians posed on a quilt for Calvin Klein and they have their boots on the quilt and they're like, eh, and I hate that. But I walk on my quilts all the time. <laughs> Cause if I'm laying something out, you know, basting something or I'm just whatever, I, I totally walk on it. The first time Eric ever did that though, I was like, excuse me, excuse me. I was like, you can't do that. But he saw me walking across a quilt. And so he thought it was fine, but I'm like, <laughs> no. It's like a, a vampire inviting, you have to invite a vampire into your house. You know, they can't just come in. It's not totally like that, but you know what I'm saying. You can't walk on my quilt unless I say it's fine. Yeah, okay. It is really beautiful, Kelly, I agree. Congratulations, Belle, absolutely gorgeous. And you have lovely toenails and I haven't had a, man a manicure or a pedicure in two years. Okay. Um, this quilt, which is delightful. Who is, wait, hold on. I, I didn't put these in order, but I have everybody here. Look. 
Deb. The Bee Quilt. Um, Deb says, I first met you when you were doing your mom's show and loved your quirkiness then as I do now. I've learned so many interesting things. Well, okay, this is a very nice thing. So she says, uh, interesting things on Quilt Nerd and look forward to discovering with you in 2022. Attached is one of the quilts I made in 2021. And Deb says, it was very hard to choose only one of my children. <laughs> well, yeah, it's true. Asking people to pick just one. I mean, who was it who, this is beautiful. Wait, wait, wait a minute. It says, eat thou honey because it is good. Proverbs, what is that? 14, 13. The Life Honeybee, Volume 1, 1867. This is terrific. Deb, you're here, right? Everyone loves your quilt, Belle, by the way. Hey, our time to quilt. I see you out there. Good to see you. Happy New Year. Um, it is beautiful piecework. It's just fantastic. Oh, how much fun is this? You know what we should do? In 2022, we should do like a quarterly roundup. Really, we should do a quarterly roundup of quilt nerd made quilts, you know? I think that's a really good idea. And believe me, I thought about like, I was like, oh, I could go into the Discord and see and pull things that people have made and post it to the Discord. But I think you can tell, like it was just too much. I couldn't do it. But um, that'd be fun though, you know? Cause this is great. This is like a show and tell. It's just great. Queen Bee Quilting. Congratulations, everyone loves it. You're very talented. And I see, I see this. We see part of your stash here peeking through. Don't think we don't see that. Wait, I can't. No, I can't make it. Well, we see it over there on the left. That's a weird perspective. Okay, way to go, 2021. Good stuff happening. Okay, oh, and this is Dee Marie. Dee Marie, very traditional and like completely on point. Like this is, it's perfect. And I, I know something about these quilts that I'm gonna tell you. Where are you, Dee Marie? Where are you? Here you are. Yeah, so here's an Irish chain. I'm always impressed by people who can complete a beautiful quilt like this. Uh, oh yeah, and what I know about this quilt and the next one that she sent me, hand quilted, all hand quilted. It's the, it's the two and three color quilts that just, they knock me out because I mean, it's fortitude. I'm serious, it, it takes fortitude to get a three color or two color quilt made, but they're always so awesome. They're so, effective they're so beautiful so many of the vintage quilts that we love are like just a few colors but with all of the fabric choices pardon me that we have today it's very hard it takes a, a certain kind of i don't know vision to use just a few colors with 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 a quilt and it's just fabulous it's gorgeous it's gorgeous and so is this one which was the second one she sent me de marie hand quilted look at that fan quilting just feast your eyes on that unbelievable it's beautiful there you go de marie oh yeah oh this is great okay this is a sketch feed puppy feed puppy it's your moment this is from Feed Puppy, Mimi, um, who is a subscriber. Thank you for subscribing. If you don't subscribe, I hope you'll consider it. Um, I'm sending a photo of a quilt I finished this year. It's a throw sized, mostly repurposed slash thrifted fabric uh, and re-dyed. I sent you the watercolor idea I started with and then the final product. This is the fourth quilt I've ever made. The fourth quilt I've ever made and the first quilt I haven't kept for myself. Love your videos. I'll be tuned in tomorrow night, stuck in my room. Um, so, do you want to see the quilt? Yes. Ah! So good. Oh, it's so great. I love, I mean, let me do the sketch real quick. Sketch, quilt, you nailed it. You nailed it. Mimi, you nailed it. Everyone loves it. I know. Dee Marie, every, yes, it's, everything is wonderful. Everything's great. Um, this, this is really, it's, it's so cool to see the sketch, the watercolor, watercolor sketch. You're also very talented at painting. Um, and then to see the realized quilt, it's just great. And you know, you have the watercolor sort of sense to it, you know, like the different colors, this, this, this here is like a, I don't know if it's a hand dyed or not, but there's kind of this washed 
feeling to it like that like this up here you know this here you know you can't see this but like yeah these pieces this sort of mottled grayish it's not gray sort of a faded purple or something you know what i'm all you know what i'm saying everybody you know it's got this washed quality to it which is perfect for what your vision was it's amazing it's amazing it's amazing it's amazing F fabulous fabulous nothing lost in translation that's what myra says exactly couldn't couldn't have said it better myself this is amazing too this is from ivy cadivy here's what ivy says about this quilt i've attached my stitched by me favorite quilt of 2021 this is a portrait of my lovely Oma Trude. Trude or Trudy? Trudy. T-R-U-D-E, okay? I'm gonna say Oma Trudy. And who was Oma Trudy? My husband's grandmother. And when I was reading that, I was like, that is such a cool relationship in life to have. Your husband's grandmother. Like this woman, you lived so much of your life never knowing she existed, but then you got married to your husband and it's his grandmother. And she's like, Amazing, obviously amazing, okay? Oma Trudy, my husband's grandmother, a tall, kind-hearted woman born in 1907 in Germany. She came here with Gary's mom, she, she was divorced, came here with Gary's mom, age nine, in 1939, yes, during the war, sponsored by Uncle Alan's dad, who owned a shaving brush factory in the Bronx. Oma Trudy worked as a sales lady at Lord & Taylor. NYC and lived till the age of 96, a fancy lady with a gentle smile. I started, so this is Ivy. I started quilting during the pandemic as my work dropped off the face of the earth. Here you can see I'm trying to understand piecing and free motion embroidery. Oh yeah, you're trying? Yeah, you're trying. Girl, you got it. Mainly I was interested in catching the essence of Oma Trudy's character. In 2020, my first portrait quilt includes 16 of my family members I have on my sofa to keep me company while in lockdown. Um, and then there's more here that's like very hard to not read all of. Um, okay, my background. I'm a toy designer and inventor. Prim preliminary, preliminary mechanical breadboards. My grandmother taught me to embroider when I was five. I know because I crocheted a hat for my cousin Lisa when she was born. I mean, it's you people are ridiculous. You're ridiculous. You're ridiculous. This is amazing. Yeah, Oma Trudy. Ivy Kadavi. Trudy. Okay, good, good, good. I got it right. Just wonderful. Just amazing. Just wonderful. Thank you for sending that. You're a toy designer. <laughs> Uh, we win we win everything okay this is fabulous this is here oh, hey, hang on hang on hang on this oh my god this is great this is great this is from Kristen Kirsten oh no did I write it down no I didn't write it down wrong hold on Kristen yeah Kristen Kristen was brief in her comments but this quilt this is very powerful Kristen says this quilt was my favorite for the year and the first time I used string quilt blocks. I love a string quilt. I love it. It's so it's it's so much fun. And it's like you can get a quilt made, a fabulous quilt made. When you need one, you can get one done with a string quilt. I love it. Um and Kristen says, I had so much fun. And this quilt went to a local police officer and he loved it. Oh. Oh, look at your tidy shoe, your tidy shoe situation over here. Hmm. And your whitewashed uh, uh, porch there. Mm. Well, your life looks pretty good. <laughs> and your quilt is beautiful, Kristen. It's just beautiful. And I love that it's a charity quilt. I bet there were a lot of charity quilts made out there in Quilt Nerd Land this year. I have no doubt that there that there were. Way to go. Congratulations. Oh, this is great. This is great. I think I've got like four more or so. Four more. Okay. M. Hicks. M. Hicks, are you out there? This is this is right, isn't it? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. This is uh, Shasta. Yeah, Shasta says so patriotic. Um, um, and uh, uh, the last quilt. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It was it was it was Kristen. Uh, so patriotic and so wonderful of you to gift it. I agree. Okay. 
So here's, here's this from M. Hicks. This is, I put my notes here, the missing quilt. Story of the missing quilt, seven year journey. Seven years ago, I started this quilt as a wedding gift. Okay, good, you're here, okay. I started, this is what M. Hicks says. Seven years ago, I started this quilt as a wedding gift for a special couple, only to have to pack it away while our basement went through an extensive remodeling project. I placed the almost completed quilt at the top of a box so I could find it quickly when I restored my sewing studio. In the midst of the remodeling project, we decided to buy another house, demolish it, <laughs> rebuild from scratch, and sell the remodeled basement house. In the interim, I was able to restore my studio to a semblance of a working studio, but for the life of me, I could not find the box with a quilt in it. Both me and my husband searched high and low for it. Let me zoom in a little bit, a little bit more here. Okay. Um, I was convinced it was lost forever. I mean, oh my God, have you ever lost a quilt? I mean, anybody? It's just terrible, it's terrifying. Oh my God, oh my God. Okay, fast forward to about four months ago. Needless to say, we had been living in our new home for three years and I'd been sewing in my studio with what I thought was an obscure box of miscellaneous old drapery fabrics on the other side of my sewing table, out of sight, out of mind. So one day I decide it's time to thoroughly clean my studio. You know the drill. <laughs> I love this. The time where you go through every drawer and every shelf in the room. That's what I did. When I got to that obscure box, I finally got to the bottom of the box and this is what I found. Eureka. Luckily, I still had the fabric to finish the last few two inch inner borders. I quickly ordered some coordinating border fabric and backing fabric and off the long armor to the long armor she went. The bride and groom celebrated their seventh wedding anniversary in April. They couldn't be happier and neither could I. That is so great. It's beautiful. Oh, it's so beautiful. The quilting is gorgeous. It's a great block. I believe now it's called many many things, but but I know this this block is it's a dove in the window, dove at, dove at the window. I've seen it as a dove at the window, but but who knows what it's called? Someone else said they made this pattern. Um, a nun maker says I made that quilt th that quilt this year from my mother. Shades of blue from light to navy with khaki background. Awesome! I love this like khaki, beigey toasted mustard <laughs> background for this. It's just beautiful. That's a great story. That's a great story. So glad you sent that. Lovely. Oh, yes. Oh, here's a detail shot. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's really, really nice. The contrast in this is is just totally on point. And yeah, the quilting. Lovely. Lovely indeed. Okay. Okay. Oh, this one. This one. Here we are. Where are we? All right. Um, hang on, hang on. Oh, yeah. This is Mary Ann. Mary Ann Tea Cake. What time is it in London right now? It's, I mean, it's late. So Marianne's not gonna be here, but this is great. So, so Marianne Tea Cake says, here's my 2021 finish made entirely from scraps. Every one of these quilts has a great story. <laughs> this quilt is called Lockdown Magic Scrap Bag Lucky Dip. It's the best title ever. I was given a load of offcuts from Dorothy fellow London Modern Quilt Guild uh, member, and there was so much, a friend also made a quilt. Both were entered into the Festival of Quilts in Birmingham. The judges said, needs more quilting. They may be right. <laughs> um, and then Marianne's, I love this quilt. It's, it's so, it, the ombre that you got, Marianne, like these these different, you know, these, this isn't striped fabric, right? Marianne created this ombre effect with the scraps that she got. And thank you to Dorothy who like gifted all these scraps to people. Um, and then Marianne says, keep up the good work, Mary, but you know what I'm gonna say, pace yourself. Okay. Thank you, Marianne. You're the voice of reason, it's true. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Padma, this is Padma, I know it. I, I could recognize it anywhere, Padma. Um, hey, yeah, it's another string quilt, right? Marianne's quilt was another string quilt. Okay. Um, Padma, by the way, we don't know, I didn't hear much about this, this quilt on the wall, but I don't care about it. I don't care about it as much as I care about your quilt, which is this one. Padma writes, this is only the second quilt I have made in probably 39 or 40 years. Yes, simple patchwork, but I like it. <laughs> And I had to work really hard washing and rewashing all those reds ahead of time so they wouldn't bleed. 
exclamation part, exclamation point. Padma, I love this quote. And I love that you were like, as God is my witness, this will not bleed. And you know, it's really, it's actually a really good reminder. I mean, I one of my favorite quotes I ever made is pink. Yeah, and it's supposed to be white. So good job, good job. It's wonderful. It's a simple patchwork, like looks, I mean, it looks, it's not simple to me. To me, it's just like, I mean, I know what you meant, but it's it's just wonderful. It's a quilt, it's a patchwork quilt. It's like the most quintessential patchwork quilt, right? It's beautiful, it's lovely. And this one up here, I love how you've hung it. I, I love how you've hung it above the bed. It's perfect, okay, all right. Red and white, red and white. Oh, and then Shasta. Shasta, we need to talk. Okay, this one's gonna blow your mind. Shasta, uh, this is a quilt a detail shot. You'll see a, a slightly bigger version. Yeah, I got great detail shots from Shasta and this quilt is all about the details, okay? So let me tell you. This is called quote crazy quilt, right? Quote crazy quilt. Hang on, let me wet my whistle. I'm attaching some photos of my quilt. Oh, sorry, I, I had the title wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, Shasta says, I call it inspirational quote crazy quilt. I started it in 2002. Hang on. As a block swap that I hosted, I asked for square and a square blocks with a quote that would help uplift someone who was feeling down. I put the quilt together, but I got sidetracked with other things. I picked it up again at the beginning of 2020. Embellishing it helped comfort me when I was unemployed and isolating as the world shut down. It also helped me as I grieved the sudden loss of my brother in 2020. I finished quilting and binding it on September 11th, 2021. I don't have a good full shot yet. I plan to make a video that shows the quilt row by row. I documented my progress on my blog, which I will be putting in the chat, highroadquilter.blogspot.com. Look at these here. Let me put that in the chat right now. highroadquilter.blogspot.com. That's Shasta's blog. Um, okay, it won't let me put the thing in, in my chat. Uh, Marie, D Marie, I'm calling upon you. highroadquilter.blogspot.com. Although of course Shasta, I think you're I think you're here in the show and you could put it in yourself. But look at these, I mean this this is a great, great quilt and it's a great one to look at tonight, right? B. Cardozo, give yourself permission to fail. Forgiveness when you do. Consistency is the last refuge of the unimaginative. Oscar Wilde, oh, Oscar Wilde. Look at this wonderful work. This is sculptural, right? You're using decorative stitching here. Shasta, this quilt is amazing. Everyone should carefully observe which way his heart drives him and then choose that way with all his strength. Helen Keller. Carefully observe which way his heart drives him and then choose that way with all his strength. You, I mean, the embroidery on this, Shasta, amazing. It's just amazing. It's just, it's just wonderful. There's, there's several more. I mean, I, ugh, I'm just gonna let that one, let that one sit. It's, it really is, I, okay, of course inspirational quote, crazy quilt, right? You've got all these references to crazy quilts in this wonderful, and I these scraps. You know what's funny? I think I have this fabric, this, this blue one here. It's old school, right? It looks vintage to me. If it isn't vintage, I have one that's vintage that looks a lot like that. It's wonderful, I love this quilt. And, and remember what she says, you know, I picked it up again. She started it as, in 2002 as a block swap that she hosted. And she, she says that I put it together, but I got sidetracked, picked it up again at the beginning of 2020. It comforted you when you were unemployed and isolating as the world shut down. I mean, if there's any, any hesitation, right, of anybody who's stumbled across this show, you know, it's like, are, have you been like given the gift of, of being a quilt person? Are you kidding me? We get, we get to have this, you know, in our lives and, and, and 
quilts are they're powerful they're not just they're not just historical documents i'm always talking about all the things that they are you know their history and their art and blah, 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 blah. but but they're healing things they really are they really are and if you have them in your life you're like you're one of the lucky ones you know so if you're watching this show you're one of the lucky ones and and don't we know it um for we know that our patchwork heritage is a strength, not a weakness. What? Is that an Obama quote? Obviously, it is, right? Obviously. That's cool. I didn't know that. I didn't know he said that. Certainly a reference, you know, making it. That's fabulous. Well, I'm going to remember that. Yeah, it's really great. It's magnificent. That's what Kelly says. It is magnificent. Don't worry, be happy. This is a, a good message for the new year as well. So brilliant. Okay. Is that, I, th whoa, 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 whoa. sorry, sorry. Is that what I've got? Oh, no, 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 no. There's two more. There's two more. Oh, no, 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 no. There's three more. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Okay. This is from, this is from, it's from my friend. It's from, it's from Susan. It's from Susan. Susan, I don't think that you had anything. Susan, do you want to say anything about this quilt? It's actually the second quilt I've seen of yours. I almost put your other quilt, the aliens one, but I'm saving the aliens one for an intro quilt for the show sometime. But I don't think that you gave me context because this, because you attached this in the email where you sent me the names of the people who are going to help with the book. Uh, hey, Susan, it's made in improv style. <laughs> Susan's like, uh, it's improv. <laughs> it's fabulous. Y you know, you improv this whole thing? I mean, I can see that you didn't use a pattern, right? That's obvious. But like, this looks very structured. To me, this looks like a quilt that we would see while we're looking at um, quilts at Sakwa. Are you a Sakwa member? I don't know. There's so much more to know. And I agree with you, So Demented. It is so wonderful to see all the amazing quilters and the nerds. Yeah. And I know that, you know, some people maybe didn't see the last show and didn't know that they could send me quilts to put in the show. But like I said, this will happen again because this is fantastic. I love looking at your quilts. It's like show and tell, but it's kind of almost better because we can get really, really close and you don't have to wait in line to really like look at the stuff, you know, or wait in line. I mean, I don't know. You don't have to wait in line to show your quilt and you can be in your pajamas and you can get closer because it's show and tell can't always get close. You know, if it's a big guild meeting, you're not going to get close. So here we can see Susan or Michael's quilt up close. Here's more stripes. Molly, if you're still there, got stripes. Mother Nature, there's going to be time. There's going to be time. You can say there will be, <laughs> there will be time. I promise. Um, hey, L Riggs. It's good to see you out there. Uh, and, and Susan R. Michael says, yes, I lurk at Sakwa. Well, obviously you need to be doing that. Okay. Second, the penultimate quilt. There's one more after this. This is from Trevor, Trevor Widow. This is very, this is intense here. Okay. I love the basketball hoop, you know, the, the, gra oh, I see a hand. Don't you love when, look at, don't you love when you see a hand when someone's holding up their quilt? I love that. I love it. I just, I just love it. It's, it's a, it's a very human moment. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, this is great. So here's what Trevor says. Okay. Um, I made this quilt for my, oh, it's called Reflections. I made this quilt for my best friend, Ben. And it's also the first quilt I ever designed. And the first quilt I wrote and sold the pattern for back in March. The quilt's design was inspired by an episode of one of my favorite TV shows as a child, Avatar, The Last Airbender. There's a scene where the main character, Aang, meditates, and when he opens his eyes, he sees all of his past lives before him. Whenever we look into a mirror, we are seeing not just us, but the accumulation of all our past selves, from the good to the bad and everything in between. It is because of these different stages in life that we are who we are today. The most obvious example for me was the difference of who I was in the closet compared to who I was when I finally came out. A family friend of mine explained it to me like so. It's not that, quote, it's not that you're a different person because you've always been you. 
The reason it seems like you're becoming different people is because with each new experience, you are peeling back a layer, slowly getting closer to your core, your true self, unquote. When I was choosing fabric for this quilt, I wanted to make the triangle stand out, not just visually, but tactily. Remember, the triangles represent something different than the background. So in my quilt, I chose a flannel for the triangle to give it that extra dimension compared to the smooth cotton background. It's pretty good, huh? I've been through a lot in 2021 with a lot of changes. It was my first full year being officially divorced and I began it by making quilts and quilt patterns. I'm ending it in clown school in France. What? I'm, I'm, are you out, Trevor, are you out there? Are you kidding me? Uh, okay, you're amazing. I'm ending it in clown school in France. Which one? Because I actually know a little bit about clown schools in France. Pursuing a lifelong dream of mine. OMG. In this past year, I've grown to know myself on a deeper and more personal level than I ever thought was possible. And when ever I look at this quilt, I'm reminded of the pain, the joy, tears, and anger that's gotten me to this point. Quilts are many, many things, but simply put for me, they're a memory that you can cuddle with. For me, 2021 was the year I truly started to live for myself and said F you to whoever wanted to take me off my path. So I hope whoever reads slash sees slash hears this, you start living life for yourself this next year. And if you already have, keep going. I know it will get scary at times, but cuddle with a quilt and you will do great things. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Circus geek. That's right. You're here. Oh, thank God. Trevor, are you in France right now? Are you? <sighs> All right. All right. I have one more quilt for you. And I got to be honest, this one to me is the perfect ending for the quilt nerd parade of 2021. <laughs> because it's adorable. Oh wait, I still need this paper. Hang on, it's adorable. And bleh. it's from Word and Bird Nerd. And Word and Bird Nerd, I believe, oh, you're the one, you're watching this show, maybe still, I don't know, with your husband on the couch. And I don't know if you're drinking champagne or not, but yeah, you are. Yeah, you said you are. Save the best for last. And this is from Word and Bird Nerd. It's just so great. It is, it's so great to end on this one. Are you ready for this? The story is ridiculous. Okay. And this, look, it's the end of the holiday season, right? We're saying goodbye to it and Santa. Listen to this. <laughs> when she sent this to me, here's what she, here's a quilt I made in 2021. I started it in 2019. Then I thought I could get it done for 2020 and still didn't finish it. I, I mean, we, we know this. I completed the binding about 10 minutes ago <laughs> and enlisted my husband. Here's the husband again. You're a good man. To stand outside so I could take pictures, threads and all. Look at this. We got another hand. Look at this. We got a hand in the shot. That's a thumb in the shot, people. Flag on the play. Flag on the play. Um, she says, I noticed a stray thread on Santa. Oh yes, oh yes, we see it. See, this is what people do. We do this, quilters, we do this. We point out like, oh, don't look at this because this isn't right. Uh, and then, but no one would notice it if you hadn't said it. But I'm glad you said it because it's really cute. There's a stray thread on Santa. Okay, but listen to this, listen to this. My husband was a professional Santa for six years. <laughs> Maybe this is when I'm actually gonna cry. So I was mostly thinking of him <laughs> when I made this quilt. Oh my God, I, I just, I just love it. I just love it. <clears throat> Sorry. My husband was a professional Santa for six years, so I was mostly thinking of him when I made this quilt. Plus I love blue and white. My house is full of it. <clears throat> Cheers, hope to spend a bit of time with all the nerds on Twitch tonight. Sorry. Um, <laughs> also, I will, hear Santa with, oh yes, here's his little thread. Um, I will insist my husband watch Saturday's video because he's not convinced that cutting up quilts is a bad thing. He tries to compare it to turning grapes into wine and does not feel this is a ridiculous comparison. Well, <laughs> thank you, Kathy, in Florida. You may be asleep. 
I don't know. We'll know. We'll know. Those are the quilt nerd quilts of 2021. Now, <clears throat> that's that's that. And I'm going to do something next. <laughs> because I really want to do it. And there's... Oh, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do... I want to do... A, a, there's, just not, there's not that many of these, but I want to do a couple quilt nerd favorites. Some favorite, like, moments from... From the show. Okay, I need a chip. I'm going to have some water. Okay, so I, so I went through all the thumbnails, you know. Here's what we have left. Let me just tell you this. Here's what we have left. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on. We've got the Quilt Nerd favorites. There's just a few. And then quilt shows. I really want to go through quilt shows of 2021. Not exhibits, but shows like the Bested Show of Quilt Con and everything. And then there's just a few quilts in review. Like just a few extras that I have. But... That's what we're looking at, okay, for in terms of like what like what am I doing here? What are we all doing? Okay. So, you know, it's one in the morning here, central time. I've got enough pep to to do the rest of, of the content. You know, if you're tired, if it's late, I get it. If you're not Oh, did I just miss Mount I just missed Mountain Time. Mountain Time, you just had you just had Happy New Year. Somebody just said. Somebody just said Oh, Muggy, Molly's got to go to sleep. Listen, you are, <laughs> Molly, you're a gem too. I'm happy to be part of this community as well. So glad you came. You and I have things to talk about. Like, yeah, I mean, the book, right? It's got to happen. Um, you're just, you're just really, really welcome here. Um, and, and thank you. Thank you. Kelly, Kelly, there's going to be time. There's going to be time. Don't worry. We're going to do this again. Susan R. Michael says, it's so great to see the nerd quilts. A thousand percent. I would say like quarterly, probably quarterly, like four times a year. That makes sense, right? To do a quilt nerd parade <laughs> um, because people need time to finish stuff. We can't do it like every month. You know, that's that doesn't make sense. But like four times a year, I think we get a really good haul. You know what I'm saying? Um Good, good, good. Yeah, thank you for everybody who has exhibited. M. Hicks and Word and Bird Nerd are going to be roomies at QuiltCon. Hell yeah. It's awesome. Okay, so here's a few Here's a few of some of my favorite shows. I was going through the thumbnails that I make, uh, and I was like, well, let's just talk about what we've done here, you know? Some of my favorite shows. Uh, Jesse Crimes. We talked about Jesse Crimes, who works with the... Uh, who, 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 do, who makes quilts along with Amish women in Pennsylvania. Using, he uses clothes from incarcerated individuals to help bring awareness to the, uh, the systemic problems, right, in, in prisons in the United States. And he was, he's a convicted felon, was he? I think so. I think he served time in federal prison himself. We learned about his project and we watched that video, which was amazing. And I just remember leaving that show that night. And if you, if you missed it, it's on YouTube, right? I, I upload all the, the pictures to uh, or all the um, the videos to YouTube. The, the videos stay on Twitch for 60 days, but then they go away. But YouTube, I can upload them as like regular videos and they stay. You need to go back and look at this. I mean, this, this guy is amazing. And Joyous Fibers and Susan Michael are gonna help me start letting these people know <laughs> that they've been talked about and celebrated on Quilt Nerd because Jesse Crime should know that we love him, right? And we, we think his process is amazing. We also watched that dumb preview for this dumb movie oh no i'm with them i don't like that hang on hang on remember this these this dumb movie look i gave them little comments i'm the worst yep you are um but that was not the fun part the fun part was was looking at at uh, the work of jesse crimes who i thought was really cool uh that whole project was really cool okay so that was a fun show we need a, a, a meetup at QuiltCon. Mother, Mother Nature, will you, send, will you email me twitch at maryfonts.com? Email me twitch at maryfonts.com. If you want to. If you, well, you don't have to. Wait a minute. You know, I could use a hand getting that together. And if you want to, like, just help me, like, I don't even know what I'll need help with. Probably just figuring out, like, I don't know, everything. <laughs> but, yeah, what should we do? I mean, it's probably just, like, we meet at a restaurant or we meet at my hotel room <laughs> and just hang out, you know, something like that. But I absolutely will absolutely do a quilt nerd meetup. I mean, my God. Okay. Another, another show I loved was the Carter family show. Cause you remember with the Carter family show it, um, we talked about Sarah Carter and I haven't done this in a while. And, uh, 
and her quilts. But then we started watching that 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 video made by Harry Smith. You remember the seminal patchwork, the art film? That was crazy. That was crazy. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. I just love that show. I thought it was great. Um, yes, 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 indeed. Okay, hey, the artist and the quilt. That was a lot of fun. We looked at that book and that exhibit. Like, what was this whole thing where you had artists like Miriam Shapiro and, uh, oh, is her name? Anyway, this, you know, artists who are exhibiting fine art, right, in museums, and then they, the people who put this artist in the quilt thing together, they, they paired up quilt makers with these artists and the, and the quilt makers made a quilt out of their art. I mean, it was so weird. It's so bizarre. I'm going to talk a lot about it at QuiltCon, by the way. It's going to be a whole thing. Um, so that was a really fun show. You know, we looked at the girl with the corn quilt and this quilt in the background, that was the quilt from the Jewish Museum that was made by an immigrant. It was just so cool. So cool. So these are fun. These were fun shows. Nicole Ritchie selling G's bin quilts on Etsy. Totally weird. I think my face says it all down there. Um, I think, I mean, I want to go through this because I, I guess I, this was a show from the other day. I, I looked back at these thumbnails and I was like, well, how do we do like a year in review of quilt nerd that doesn't involve me doing like clips of the show or because like that, that's a whole, that's so much work and I don't want to do that. But I, I wanted to do something to like, Look how much we've learned. I mean, we, we've really learned a lot in the time from the time the show started to now. And you, if you go back and kind of look at those past shows, just at the thumbnails of them, there's so much stuff that we get to cover. And it's a it's proof that that there's there's so much interesting content out there when it comes to looking at quilts and, and being in the world that we're in, right? The quilts in Bosnia. I know that was a favorite show of a lot of people because it's come up a few times, but the Bosnia quilts, um, just amazing, totally amazing. And then the, the woman in space, the space quilter, so much fun. A couple more, Rosie Lee Tompkins, the deep dive on Rosie Lee Tompkins. Um, Kelly can't go to QuiltCon because, yep, your husband's an organ, well, husband or someone in your family, it could be your son, I'm not sure, is an organ transplant survivor, probably your husband. Uh, you, Kelly says, we were used to the isolation before anyone ever heard of COVID. Ah, oh, Kelly. Well, there'll be a quilt nerd meetup, but maybe there'll be a live stream too, you know? Have webcam, we'll travel, you know? But... We'll be able to, we'll send you, we'll send you, we'll send you a big hello, you know? A lot of people won't be able to for very different reasons, all kinds of different reasons, but but we'll be there and we'll send our vibes. Um, Radka Donnell, right? We read the poem. Radka Donnell, very, very interesting. She's got a piece in the Fabric of a Nation exhibit, I believe. Okay. Uh, the de oh, ooh, L Rig or Riggs is working on a denim quilt. You saw the denim quilt show. This one, I shouldn't have put this one in here, but but no, I wanted to because do you remember this quilt? This one here. <laughs> I'm zooming in really close past the little twitch icon. Do you remember? We couldn't figure out how she made this one. Do you remember that? We were like, is that applique? Is it, what is it? It was so much fun to look at that. I've got lots of, you know, good memories of going like this, you know, trying to figure out the piecing. It was the first time, this show was the first time that, oh, it was called Quilt Church at that time, but it was the first time that we really analyzed a quilt together. Like that, I, it hadn't happened yet. This was some time ago, some months ago. And I just, I realized that night doing that show that, um, this, that this show was, we could do that kind of thing. You know, we could, we could look at quilt history and we could look at these different things, but we could also just nerd out on construction. And it was a, I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> that's great. And I loved le learning about the Gutchens, you know, Jeff and Beth Gutchen. I think Jeff Gutchen has to be in the book, don't you think? He's an amazing person. Anyway, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so that was my quick little review. I'm glad that was very short because, I mean, I am going to run out of steam eventually, but not yet. I think this different desktop thing is working great. Okay, check this out. Yeah, this is great. The, the museum exhibit thing was the longest section. Um, I assure you. So, so for the people who are tired, you're not going to like this. You're not going to like this, but, um, I'm going to take a quick break really quick. 
But don't worry. You know what I'm going to do? Go to the bathroom, get some champagne, and, and, then, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Not five minutes, two minutes, okay? <laughs> so fast okay so um <clears throat> happy new year okay ivy uh thanks for coming it's 2 a.m i feel you i feel you i get it um sj or no wait uh oh SJ, oh good sj is opening up parmesan garlic kettle chips hell yes oh i wish i had some of those um susan are you signing off yep quilting politic it's you know what oh and no maybe you're not maybe you're not leaving yet but sue is uh, Sue says, I'm off too. I haven't stayed up this late, having fun in a long time. Thank you all. Happy New Year. Love to all. Indeed. Happy New Year to you. Um, <laughs> a nun maker, the Prosecco did her in. Um, yeah, I knew, I knew, I knew that if I took a break, it'd be a problem. Um, but, but SJ's opening up chips. So, I mean, we're doing this. We're doing this. We're doing this. I'm doing this. Um, <laughs> Susan's drinking water tonight. Well, I am too, but I'm also drinking champagne. Okay, so so let's let's go. Let's do this. Let's do this. To everybody who's who's uh, who's gone, Kelly. <laughs> oh, Kelly is saying good night, everybody. I don't sleep anyway, so that's great. Okay. Oh, I kind of like this background. It's like I'm on a billboard or something. All right. So there were so many quilt shows in 2021, and by shows I mean like contests and stuff, you know. So let's take a look at some of the shows. And and I said it before, like there's no way I can go through everything. Oh, I gotta get small hand. Oh, I am getting a little bit tired. Okay. Uh, I don't know. This quilt won best of show at the International Quilt Festival in 2021. Are you surprised? No. Okay, it's amazing. It's by a person, Sachiko Chiba. It's called Rondo. And you know what? Isn't it interesting? Earlier, I'm sorry, I'm gonna eat a couple more chips because it's gonna wake me up. Oh, uh, well, it keep me awake. Um, oh, we're doing this. We're, we're going until 2 a.m. SJ, for all my East Coast people, we're doing, we're going until 2 a.m. I mean, without question, Don't, that is what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go until we can wish everybody on the West Coast a Happy New Year. And that will be our, that'll be the send off. And I just want to say that I'm working for you. I'm here for you. I think it'll be the longest stream I've ever done. 10.30 to 11.30, 11.30 to 12.30, 12.30 to 1.30 to two, three and a half hours. It's like we just started. We're doing it. Okay, Kelly, back, back to this. Okay, so Kelly, not her says, that's the most gorgeous quilt she's ever seen yeah it's pretty good um it's by yes sorry her name is again sachiko chiba and isn't it interesting 
that we saw or we read earlier about the Journey to Japan exhibit at the International Quilt Museum because that museum exhibition content said that, you know, when the, the Abstract Design and American Quilts show was done in 1971, it toured to Japan in like 74, 75, 76, whatever. And quilting, American quilt, you know, American quilts were not unknown to people in Japan, you know, at that time, but it was after the Whitney show. I remember it said, you know, Japan, Japanese quilt makers started making quilts for and winning American quilt shows. And I mean, this is an example of a Japanese quilt maker whose work is, I mean, it's the best in show at quilt festival. It's, it's pretty much the biggest paducah. You could win at the national, um, quilt museum at the, uh, sorry, AQS American quilt. Oh God. Society. Okay. It's a little bit late, uh, a little bit late, but AQS, um, you can win that show and that's a really big deal, but Quilt Festival is a really big deal too. QuiltCon, winning Best in Show at QuiltCon is a very big deal now as well. But this um, this was a pretty, a pretty, pretty big deal here for this, for this quilter. A true show quilt, I agree, I agree. It is a show quilt. This is not a quilt you use on the bed. I'm sure if uh, Ms. Chiba saw you putting Rondo on your bed, she would have a few words for you. Um, but it's but it's interesting too, you know. It's a show quilt, and it's like, is it an art quilt then? I don't have an answer to this. I'm not. It's not a leading question. We talk about art quilts being quilts made for the bed, not the wall. Well, this quilt is made for the wall. It's not made for a bed. Does it make it that you know? Does it make it an art quilt? So interesting. So interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm so glad you're here. Um, yeah, Mother Nature called it, Japanese quilter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Zoom in on the ombre. Oh, 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 wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Um, SJ asks, can you zoom in on the ombre? Oh, here, like here? Yes, 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 yes. Right in here, yeah? That's what you meant, right? Oh, I'm glad I caught that. Sorry, I, I just didn't see it. Um, Mother Nature says, at the last QuiltCon Live, I learned about the learning process of the Japanese quilter. Really? You know, I was so busy doing my stuff at QuiltCon, which is usually the case, and it was still the case when it was all online. I missed, like, most of the content. I had five lectures to do. Anyway, the point is there was a lot of amazing content there, and maybe I could get a tape of things. But So here's this ombre. But that's really cool, Mother Nature. That's really cool. Yeah, scalloped edges on top of everything else. Exactly. Hold on. Okay, well, how do I? Okay, I gotta refresh the chat. Hang on one second. I mean, it's just, it's basically perfect, right? I mean, I, it's basically, she, let me put it this way. She completed, she she realized her vision. Well, it's perfectly realized. So that's pretty cool. Okay, I refreshed the chat. There's a chance I might miss something that came in while I was refreshing it, but okay. So this, this is a quilt, these are, the first few are all from Quilt Festival. And this is a kind of a big deal because this is a quilt by Audrey Essery. It's called Repelling Radial. And I believe I asked Bob at the Quilt Festival about this and then I realized I didn't get back to him about it. And this this quilt is is a landmark thing because it's a it's a modern quilt like it's a it's a modern quilt Audrey Essery describes herself as a modern quilter and it won a major award I didn't write down what awards these different quilts won it, I had to stop somewhere but these are winners right of this of this show and it's it's a it's a specifically sort of intentionally modern quilt and it won a major award it might have won you know quilting or it might have won something but it it was in the lineup of winners um on the Quilt Museum website, and it's it's pretty amazing. Audrey Esser is really she's a name now in the quilt in the quilt world, the modern modern quilt world. It's pretty great. Mm hmm. Oh yeah, SJ's. This reminds me of those Ruth Bader Ginsburg quilts. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. 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 Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. 
this is a quilt by Hollis Chatelaine. If if you ever know, if you've ever seen Hollis Chatelaine's quilts, I mean, they're they're pictorial thread painting portrait quilts. Um, a lot of the time, she's very socially socially um, um, aware. I, I guess that's the way to put it. Um, interested in social justice. She's interested in um, elevating less seen the first the first quilt I, I remember seeing of hers was I think it's called precious water and it's uh, a quilt that has four different scenes of of um the fallout from uh you know environmental damage right so there's these there's a child drinking water from a cup you know maybe she's in Africa uh there's a man somewhere in North America, who is a far, he's a farmer and he's looking at his crops, his like dead crop, and it's just really, I mean, it's 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 a it's a quilt with a message, right? So this quilt is called Sharing the Moment, 2021, um, and it's a winner. It was a winner at at International Quilt Festival too. I mean, the the, the thread painting, it's just it's, and and Hollis Chatelaine has been doing her work for a minute, so she's she's really really got it down. I mean, look at the texture on this. It's just, it's just crazy. It's crazy. And this, oh, and, and okay, so this is the one that won. How big is this? You know what? It's not a photograph. I know I don't have the measurements and you know, I try, like I, it is important to know how big a, a thing is. Um, but I didn't, there was just so much stuff to corral this time. I didn't get it, but it's not small. It's, you know, here's another one. So, so I grabbed this one too because this, this was not part of the International Quilt uh, Festival show, but when I was looking for a good high-res picture of the other one, um, I found this one and I was like, well, they kind of go together, right? This one is called Dreams Realized. Um, I mean, I think it's, it's <clears throat> 40 by six, or 60 by 80 is twin size, right? Like, it's gonna be that size or bigger. I think, from what I've seen of Hollis Chatelaine, right? It might be much bigger, but I think it's about that size. I know the detail is insane. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, Mother Nature says the glasses are see-through. Yeah, oh my, really? I didn't even notice that, that's insane. <laughs> that's crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy. Yeah, 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 okay, you totally have to go down the rabbit hole of Hol Hollis Chatelaine, H-O-L-L-I-S-C-H-A-T, a L A I N. All this channeling. Okay. Look at this. This is cra this is this is crazy. I'm not always a huge fan of portrait quilts. I'll just be honest. To me, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't like them as much. It's like I don't like um, um, grandmother's flower garden. I don't know. I just have my preferences, right? But this, this, this. Like, yeah, and Kelly, Kelly, thank you. The Hollis Chatelaine quilt celebrating 100 years of women having the right to vote. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and specifically the African-American women getting the vote and, you know, later. Um, but this quilt, like, all of the portrait quilts are powerful, right? We just saw them, you know, too. But this quilt is like, <laughs> I don't know how, I don't know how this works. I don't know how this works. Um, this is by Jill Kurtula. It's called Just Thinking. I didn't write that down, but I actually remember. Just Thinking. And it's made of fabric. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's hard to even, like, figure out. I don't know how she did it. I don't know how she did it, but this idea that a person is... You know, a quilter is like blending into the quilt that she's making is pretty powerful. You know? I don't know, man. And I don't know which, what award she won. I mean, I don't know. Like, I'm waiting for something in the chat. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm like, I'm wondering if you're just sort of shocked. I was kind of, I was really taken aback when I saw this. It's 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 pretty special. It's very, it's just a very different quilt. I've never seen anything like it. Mother Nature says the quilt is part of her. She's a master, yeah. Yeah, it, I mean, having the vision for it, 
is one thing. And then being able to translate it is just, it's just so different. You know, you could be like, oh, it'd be so cool to have like, like a quilt, if you're, if, it, if you're a quilter who makes portraiture, or, you know, if you do this kind of thing, it's like, oh, how, you know, like somehow becoming a part of the quilt, like I, it would be so cool to do like a, a self-portrait where I was like being, being, I was just part of a quilt. And it's like, okay, cool. How are you going to do that? Like, uh, I don't know, but here we have it. You know, it's realized. It's amazing, Robin, right? It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And then the quilting with this grid, I don't know. I don't know. This person is not real. Okay. Um, and then I wanted to include this one too. Well, this is a winner of the, in the International Quilt Festival too, but this is a person, I know the person who made this. Her name is Kendall. Um, sorry, oh God, her name is Kestrel. Sorry, it's 1.30. Um, Kestrel Michaud. And I know Kestrel because Kestrel, uh, it's very random, but Eric works with someone who's like best friends with Kestrel. So this is a tech world guy who I met him when I was in DC with Eric. I was at the office and, and this Rav, you know, was, he was so cool. He's like, oh, I have a friend who's a quilt maker, you know, my friend Kestrel. And anyway, we got connected and I hired her to write for Quilt Folk. She wrote on the Nevada issue. She came, I, I was in a car with her in Nevada, driving through Nevada, you know, and she was her first time writing for Quilt Folk or writing... A lot, you know, she was a new writer, and but I just had a good feeling about her. And she's like, I'm an art quilter. And I was like, great, we don't have an art quilter writing on the magazine right now. And, and so she just was so game, and she came on this road trip. It was right before the pandemic started. Nevada was the last issue that I did on the road with Quilt Folk. Um, and and she's wonderful. And, and since I met her, she has, her star has risen in the quilt world i mean so this this quilt is called leap of faith and she's into like steampunk stuff and like she's got this great imagination and she's obviously super talented but she you know kestrel hi you know i, I don't think you're watching now i mean I, I haven't talked to you in a minute but i did talk to you not too long ago and you know how much i think of you and congratulations because you are kind of an it girl girl way to go way to way to win a big a big prize at quilt festival good job well deserved uh, oh, oh, wait, no, that's too soon. No, 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 it's not too soon. Okay, so we leave behind International Quilt Festival and we move to QuiltCon. QuiltCon together. Um, you know, Padma, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. But I get it. I get it. Um, and yeah, yes. Let's see. I was going to play it. Wait, no, this isn't the right... That's supposed to be my ooh, ooh, ah, but it's not right. It's not right. It's not there yet. It'll get there. So this quilt won Best in Show at QuiltCon Together 2021. Personally, I'm dead. I love it. I love it. I think it's I think it's magnificent. It is by em Emily, Emily Trahan. She is Can Canadian. <laughs> Canadian. She's Canadian. This is called Blooming. And I love it. I think it is so great. I was so happy when I saw this quilt. I just, I just love it. I love it. I think it's great. I think it's amazing. Um, I, I, I don't know. There's been best in shows at QuiltCon that have not moved me, that, you know, have not stirred my soul. But this one did. This one did. I just thought... I just thought it was so well deserved. I just, I just liked it. Oh, and Robin, by the way, Robin, I see you. I see you, you all over in YouTube. And Robin said, by the way, of the portrait where the woman was being absorbed into the quilt or trading DNA with the quilt, um, Robin said the small squares remind me of the chips on computer motherboards. That's you got it. You got it. I could that the, you articulated what I was in my mind, but I, I couldn't grab hold of. That's exactly right. It seemed like computers pixelated, right? So this, yeah, this quilt is great. <laughs> yes, my, my weakness. Can't tell what kind of animal it is. That's exactly right. That's what I love. That's what I love. You know me well. So anyway, yeah, I just, I think this is a great quilt. And uh, and by the way, as we look at year in review, I mean, QuiltCon Together, did they nail it or what? They did a great job with QuiltCon Together. And, and 2021 in shows, one of the things that's, you know, worth mentioning is, 
it's it changed things for quilt shows. I mean, the the online content that they did for QuiltCon. I mean, that was a that was very successful because a lot of people can't go to QuiltCon. We know that's true this year too, but in in other years, right? Um, people who can't travel, people who are in isolation before quilt uh, before QuiltCon, before um, COVID, you know, people who who can't, who have travel restrictions for whatever reason. Um, people could go to QuiltCon in 2021. You know, last year, <laughs> happy 2022. It's 2022, it's not 2021 anymore. But, um, so a lot of people really liked that. They could go to the shows, they could see things, right? Um, I, I remember when I looked at this quilt by Sean Kimber, um, Still Not, it's called Still Not. This one at QuiltCon, the Quilting Excellence Award. Um, Sean Kimber, legend. I mean, she's been a star in the quilt, in the um, modern quilt guild world for some time now. Uh, incredibly talented, I have huge respect for her. I met her briefly once and I don't know. I mean, she's Sean Kimber, she's kind of intimidating. It's like, there's Tula Pink, you know, and I like all these people, I know them well enough and I, I'm not a total nerd around different superstar quilters, but Sean Kimber is one of them. I'm, I'm nerdy around uh and by nerdy i mean awkward and lame um but this one the quilting excellence award uh it's classic sean kimber you know words um highly personal um scrappy very scrappy improvisationally pieced i mean i would say it's safe to say sean kimber <laughs> um <laughs> i love the table talk about my quilt preferences i'm not even gonna say anything i'm just gonna enjoy it um Sean Kimber, I would say, is one of those people who 1000% has defined what modern quilting is. I mean, there's people who were like pioneers, you know, and certainly there's roots, people, art quilters and things, and art, p quilters who did not label themselves and did not have a label on them before the modern quilt guild or, or even the art quilt movement. But, you know, of the modern quilt guild vibe that we all understand, you know, Sean Kimber, like Sean Kimber. She's just a, a definitive maker in that space. Yeah. And a valued one. Um, look at who it is. It's Audrey Essery again. That's right. That's right. The one who did. Sorry, let me just pull it up right here. Right here. You see a theme here? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. Mm hmm. Yes. Mm hmm. Oh, I like going back and forth between those. Check that out. Oh, check this out. Oh, no. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, no, no. Ah. See, I try to do something fancy and it's just. That's fun, and that's fun, and that's fun, and that's fun. <laughs> this is called wa Watercolor Study Number Six. This is dynamite, and you know, speaking of, speaking of this dynamite quilt, um, this, when I, so for QuiltCon Together, I interviewed Jonathan Holstein from the International Quilt Exhibit, the, the Abstract Design and American Quilts exhibit that the International Quilt Museum rebooted. Okay. And I showed him a few, of course it was on Zoom or whatever for QuiltCon together. And I showed him pictures of a few modern quilts that had won awards. And uh, I showed him this one and he loved this one. I mean, he was, you know, great about all of the ones that I showed him, but I only showed him four or five and it was, this one he really, really liked. I mean, of course, you know, abstract design and American quilts, you know, of course he's gonna like this. This is really, really, really great. It's really great. I don't know. I, again, I, I look at these quilts when, <laughs> I, I look at these quilts when, um, uh, and I think about, it's just that conception to execution moment that separates the the, the girls from the women, I guess, you know, um, and the men from the boys, whatever. Uh, because I think how wonderful to think of an idea uh, of a, for a beautiful quilt like this and then to actually get it done. And you don't see, when you look at any quilt, you don't see all the, the, the things that didn't work, right? And that's true for any piece of writing. It's true for any movie, you know, a anything that's creative that, that people make. And, and it's, you just don't see all the drafts and you don't see the, the, the sample blocks 
if you have a block quilt that did the sample blocks that didn't work you know we don't see the projects that audrey essary has not completed because it's not working right or whatever and 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 they, they anyone is the first to tell you if they have a successful quilt like yeah well it took a lot to get there you know one of the other adages or the sayings that I love so much that I keep in mind all the time, it comes up a lot, is it takes 10 years to make an overnight success. And it's it's just true. You know, somebody kind of bursts onto the scene, right? Like Audrey Essary, you know, or but she's been here. You know, like she's been new. We've been knowing, you know, about about these people in, in some way. It takes a long time to make a quilt like this and you don't see what went into it. You see the finished product and it's a, it's sublime. And that's the point, is to make something that is finally finished, but it's just, it's just interesting. <laughs> watercolors one through five were drafts. I, I doubt it. I feel like she's probably got a lot of watercolor quilts that are fully realized, but you know, I feel like there's there's always there's always the process. In fact, it's interesting. This quilt I have, let's look at this, this part first. Look at this is the design wall. The design wall for the quilt that you just got a sneak peek of. This quilt is called, um, it's a mad, mad, mid-mod world, mid-century modern world, right? Mad, mad, mid-mod world. It was uh, made by Julie Limbach Jones and some stitchers from the South Bay Modern Quilt Guild. South Bay, is that Boston? I don't know, South Bay. Um, let's look at the finished thing again. So this, I think this one judges choice or people's choice, one of those, but this, it's it's impressive. I just picked a couple from, just a few from QuiltCon together because, um, oh, cool. Because um, yeah, there's so there's so many and, and so many wonderful ones that, you know, what do you pick? I just picked a few that I really liked or that were very original. And I feel like this one was pretty darn original. Uh, these mid mid century modern houses and and shapes, you know this this thing right here, so classic in terms of design. Um, Mother Nature, are you taking a class with Audrey in January? Um, probably, right? That's probably what you meant. That's probably what you meant. Um, so this is really fun, and actually, I think you can kind of see on the design wall a little bit better what she's doing here. Um, mid mod and Mad Men, absolutely, absolutely. I never saw Mad Men. I don't know. I just never did. I mean, John Hamm is easy on the eyes, but I, I just never got into it. I, I should probably watch it. Eric and I are watching The Wire. Finally, I'm watching The Wire. It's so good. It's so good. Um, yeah, so this is just, it's great fun. It's great fun. You can do anything you want in a quilt, anything. And this is cool. This looks like a, a draftsman. I mean, it looks like a blueprint, you know? really like that too. Of course, I, I went to her blog or somewhere else to get these pictures of process. You know, these weren't on the um, um, the QuiltCon website. Padma says, it's like, I liked Mad Men for the fabrics and the furniture. Yeah, totally. And, and, the, and the clothes too, some of them, right? I mean, I don't know. Some people really, really have a thing for, you know, vintage 50s and stuff, you know, the clothes. I don't know. The clothes seemed sexy, but constricting if you were a woman. <laughs> This, this is totally amazing. Okay, this one is Nancy Lambert, Sphere Eyes. Sphere Eyes. It's trippy, isn't it? Like, how did she do that? Oh, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm into it. I'm into it. Oh, wow. Help, help. I feel like I'm in a, I don't know, one of those, like, inflatable houses. <laughs> you know, those inflatable houses. This is great. This is great. I think my, I think my commentary is... is I'm trying to say other things than it's great, but it is great. And what else, you know, what else can you say? I mean, the, con the construction of this, I have no idea. Sometimes you, you know, we look at a quilt. Obviously, I've just talked about it uh, not too long ago. We look at a quilt and we just find the construction, find the ways that they constructed the thing. And I mean, I can, I can tell a little bit, but what about this moment? What, what's happening? What's happening here? Like, how did, what is that? Is it applique? I have no idea. <laughs> SJ, is there a corner of the quilt world about microdosing? I don't know how this came up. <laughs> I don't know if you just brought it up. Oh, it's microdosing. You mean like, like this? Like, 
We've been here before, you and me, SJ. <laughs> Vertigo, yeah, exactly. Ridiculous. Oh, God. Okay. I don't know. I, you know, I'd like to meet her, actually, Nancy Lambert, and ask her many things. Many things. Microdosing, how she made her sphere eyes quilt. I don't know, but she succeeded. But but I really don't know. I mean, like, so, so it's four blocks or four units, right, obviously, but it's this, this, this part in here a and the stripe and the, I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't, and I, it's, it's too, it's too, this quilt brought it up. <laughs> Sorry. I'm like, who brought up microdosing? SJ Pepper's like, this quilt. Okay. All right. Um, and then there's one more. I think this is the last one of the quilt con. No, there's one more after this. I just, I like this one. I don't know. I think it's really great. It's called Orangerie by Sophie Zaug. I think she's from Switzerland. I think I remember that. But I don't know, to me this quilt is, is important. Like I wanted to talk about it or just show it to you, present it tonight because um, this is also classic, classic modern, right? Negative space, grid quilting or straight line quilting, I should say. Um, if you remember Victoria Finley Wolf's uh, first, the first ever best in show quilt at a quilt con was a Victoria Finley Wolf quilt called Double Edged Love. It was a double wedding ring with all this negative space, right? This this is kind of a, it's not an homage to that. It's a different quilt, but it's, it's very, you know, it's got the same things going on, right? This negative space. It's like the, the quilt pattern has, has disappeared, has reappeared, has darkened, you know, it's, it's great. It's great. I think it's really nice. And, and, you know, Padma, if you're still out there, Padma. Um, very few colors, very few, three. They're literally three, blue, orange, and white, period. That's it, that's it. And Kelly Naher, does it have a Kandinsky vibe or is it just me? It's not just you, I completely get it. Especially with the quilting, the quilting with the shapes, right? Like I feel your Kandinsky moment right up here in the corner, right? This upper right-hand corner. I get it. I feel you. I'm here for it. Okay. So that's Orangerie. And then this last one, I don't know, this one too. This, so this one, Susan Santistevan, Being Human 2020. Now this quilt, I was looking at the different ones and I was like, I don't know, what am I gonna, you know, let me pick this and that. This is a great quilt, okay? Let me just, let, 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 me, let me tell you why. <laughs> um, let me explain to you why this is a great quilt. Sometimes Eric mansplains to me, and sometimes he knows it, and he's laughing about it and doing it ironically, and sometimes he's not. And I don't really like that word mansplain, and I don't really go there, except that sometimes it's so obvious that he's like, he just misses the point anyway. I'm not gonna, but anyway, he's like, you know, sometimes life's like that. And I'm like, oh, is that right? Is that, oh, thank you for telling me. Okay. <laughs> sometimes you just gotta, you know, do with it. I'm like, okay. Um, no, let's let's stay on point here. So this this quilt is pretty special because look what's going on here. Okay, it's 15 minutes till New Year's. I know. I'm seeing 15 minutes, my West Coast people. 15 minutes. I've got my phone. You know what? I'm actually going to turn it on. Yep, yep. The timer is is going. So, but look what she did here. She's got these. This is kind of mid-century too, right? It's got kind of a mid-century vibe as well. But um, just those, I don't know, those horizontal sort of structures, offset. I don't know. Um, but there are these planes, P L A N E, planes of design, contained planes of design, and then it's. Oh, good, Padma, I'm so glad. Um, so, so then, and so they're all sovereign, right? They're all distinct. Oh, I didn't notice that before. Look at this. This is a, this has a, um, an EKG line. Look at that. Do you see in the brown? There's like an EKG reading in red thread. That's, that's amazing. I didn't notice that at all until now. So, so there's all, so each piece is completely different. And they look like they're floating, I think. Um, 
I no, you the binding is so it's oh my god, you're right. I didn't notice it. I didn't see it till now. Oh, it's so much fun to look at these quilts with you. So yeah, look at that. The binding on the left hand side is white, and the binding on the right hand side is black. <laughs> that gets crisp. And okay. And then these line the, the quilting. Look at the quilting on each of these sort of hovering ships <laughs> these alien ships but it's like it's weaving right like 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 they're like it is woven with the quilting i mean it's really great i i think it's it's i don't know sometimes you have to really just say hang on have i seen this before you know have i am i really looking closely at this quilt i mean you know i don't know i think it's really special <laughs> Of the quilts that I chose, I was like, this one. This one has got a lot going on. Is it my favorite quilt in the world? No. But it's, it's, it's good. <laughs> it's good. It's really good. Earthquake size. Ooh, Padma says, could be an earthquake seismograph. Exactly. It may not be an EKG. Totally. It's a reading. That's all we know, right? It's really cool. Really cool. Slices. Yeah, Kelly, they are slices. Mm-hmm. They are slices. Like a like a um Yeah. <laughs> no, like like a like a, a medical students look at slices of a you know, a bone or whatever, you know. It's true. Okay. Okay. Oh my god. I think I think it actually I think we're I actually timed everything just right. Wait a minute. Is that true? Yes, yes, look, we have just enough time. Look, quilts and review. This is the last part and it's almost New Year's and this is it. So this is just a few, these are a few extra little fun thing. I'm eating chips so I can stay awake. Um, I'm like the person at the party, you know, who's like ready to go home, but her boyfriend, you know, is like trying to find the coat in the coat room and can't and now he's talking to his friend and you know, and I'm just like, yeah, yeah. Great party. Great. Okay. You know what's awesome though about doing New Year's Eve like this? I have been wearing these shoes the whole time. My feet feel great. They're great. I've been sitting down the whole time. Okay. So this this is a quilt. We I just mentioned Victoria Finley Wolf. <laughs> a lie detector test. It's the SJ I know and love. Um, Victoria Finley Wolf, this quilt is called Uncertainty. I think this, so it's obviously coronavirus, right? So it was made in 2021. All the things that I'm showing you are made in 2021, obviously. Um, 2021 made or winners of awards in 2021. I think, I think, did I give a picture of this? No. I think this quilt is in a book called Quarantine Quilts that was put together by Sandra Sider. I'm not totally sure, but there was a book published in 2021 called Quarantine Quilts. Uh, and different people made, you know, quilts in quarantine. And I, I'm pretty sure this is one. If it, it wasn't one of the quilts in the book, it should have been. Um, it probably was Victoria Finley Wolf. But I mean, this quilt's great. You know, I've seen different quilts made with, you know, the coronavirus sort of part of you know, part of the design. And and unfortunately the coronavirus is really ugly, you know, design wise, like just as a shape, it's really unattractive. This ball with these little tiny spikes, it's terrible, you know, it, it couldn't it couldn't give us, you know, a better look, look, right? It couldn't serve better, a better aesthetic, could it? Of course not, you know. But this, and so I've seen I've seen quilts with the coronavirus on it that you know didn't really work for me design wise. But Victoria Finley Wolf, you know, leave it to her to get this, to get it right. I mean, the way she interpreted it, interpreted the um, the corona right on the on the the virus itself is it's really great. You know, it's really great. And I look at this quilt too, and I see. You know, I don't feel depressed. I feel introspective. Sometimes with the quilts, with the coronavirus things on them, it's like, oh God, I know, I know, you know, but this quilt in particular, I think is really successful in what it does. 
Kelly, your husband has been asleep for nearly two hours. He's going to wake up refreshed. <laughs> Me? I don't know. And I have editing to do tomorrow to get my video ready for you all for tomorrow night. Oh, Lord. Okay. Oh, we got nine minutes. Nine minutes till it's New Year's Eve on the West Coast. This is another quilt uh, from the pandemic you know, moment. Uh, Cindy L. Curry, Hopeful Words, 2021. Progress, strength, resilience, acceptance, necessity, motivation. A quilt made in 2021, obviously. You know, coronavirus, uh, lockdown, pandemic, uh, hellscape inspired. Hellscape inspired. Okay. Um, Red Cross. Was there a Red Cross in here? Oh, yeah. Red Cross. A Padma. Mm, you saw it. I didn't see it. I did not see it. The Red Cross. The essential workers. Myra, I believe, is our one of our healthcare workers who is a quilt nerd. And we appreciate you, Myra. I don't think you're here anymore. I think you were sleeping like Kelly's husband. That is fine. Um, okay, this is cool. Okay, check this out. So this, this is the Zimbabwe girls COVID quilt. Yeah, check this out. Early in the summer of 2020, when the impact of COVID-19, uh, the pandemic was becoming clear, 10 girls from the Women Advocacy Project in Zimbabwe decided to describe their experience with the pandemic through embroidery. The virus was surging in Europe and the U.S. at the time. It was not clear how Africa would be affected, but everyone feared the worst. As we reported, the crowded communities of Harare seemed particularly vulnerable. Zimbabwe had almost no testing facilities and just one, one intensive care unit. If the virus was allowed to enter communities like Chitung, Chitungwiza and Epworth, there was a real fear it could spread like wildfire. Um, in, in 2019, so this, I, this is a, this is a, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is a piece. I'm reading this to you from the advocacy project and this was published in 2021. So this, this quilt started earlier, but I, this was written in 2021. So I'm counting it. Okay. Um, okay. Da, 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 da. So, so the Zimbabwe, okay. Constance Mugari, the founder of, um, Women Advocacy Project, okay, took the, uh, went to, went to Nairobi, okay, so, so girls in this project decided to use their stitching skills to describe the pandemic. We asked the Women's Advocacy Project to come up with a budget and drew on our own COVID-19 community to fund and cover the costs of training, transport, and material, around $1,500. Um, so there's, this is a, a long piece, but I will get to this part. Poor families in Chitung, Chitungwiza and Epworth earn as little as a uh, $1.50 a day. The lockdown has prevented them from taking their goods to market and shopping for essential foodstuffs. The regulations on travel and masks have fallen most heavily on poor families. Um, one of the blocks made by Evelyn warns of hunger. Vimbai is worried at the increase in domestic violence. Trish finds that rising costs are putting basic food commodities out of reach. So each block is telling this different story. Um, the squares were assembled into the wonderful finished quilt pictured above by Colleen in Wisconsin. Colleen Ansbaugh in Wisconsin, God bless you. <sighs> Colleen produced one of the finest art quilts from Malayan embroidery for the first sister artist challenge. Okay, it's just, it's just wonderful. So you can contact uh, the people who run this and there's a video and anyway, so this is cool. This is from Zimbabwe. Yeah, I know. Isn't this great? It's great. It's just great. There's my word again. Great. But it, it's really wonderful. So I wonder where this is living now. I'll put the tomorrow after I'm done editing, I'll get um, notes up in the discord and, and I'll, I'll pass this along because it's really, really special. Okay. All right. What other quilt in review do I have to show you? Ugh, ugh. Wait, where are you? Where are you? Oh yeah, this one. Okay. Wait a minute. What is this from? Where did I find this magnificent thing? What is this from? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, you know what I think? So, so <laughs> this is super random, but, 
Oh my God, it's four minutes. Okay, it's four minutes till midnight. So I found this thing that, um, uh, it was a fabric, it's a quilt shop in Albuquerque. Quilt shop in Albuquerque, what is it from? And, and these are staff quilts. It's amazing. The timing on this, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. This is a staff quilt from their, this shop in Albuquerque. It's a huge fabric store, okay? And they posted that the quilts that their staff had finished in 2021, and this is one of them. Look, this is one of them. And this is one of them, which I think is totally cool and random and great and artsy and weird and perfect. And this one, which is a K-facet pattern, okay? And, and, and there's stories about all of these. I'll put the link in the Discord, but people are finishing these quilts. One of them, you know, started a quilt long ago and finally finished it. And, and you know, it's just great. And it was so random, but I found, I found these quilts that were made in 2021 and I put them in the show. It's pretty much as simple as that. So yeah, it was this, these three from Albuquerque. That one, that one, and that one. And then the final thing, the final thing, this is the last four quilts I have for you. It's perfect timing. I don't know how I do this. I don't know. Uh, thank you very much. Thank oh, please. No. Um, these last quilts are the recent acquisitions, the 2021 acquisitions from the, the, uh, uh, SAQA, the Studio Art Quilt Associates organization, have purchased for their collection slash whatever empire. This quilt is called Sunset 17 by Ann Johnson. Look at that. Isn't that great? It's amazing. Oh my God, we have two minutes. Okay, I gotta go. Um, okay, yep, okay, great. There you go, Ann Johnson, amazing. Look at this, look at this quilt. It's called Mac 2020, Carol Miraben. I mean, it's, it's like, you know what it is. It's great, <laughs> that's right, that's right. Um, it's just, it's, yes, yes, I love this. You know what, talk, talk about ombre. Who was wanting to see the ombre before? How did this happen? What is this? How did this, how does this work? How does it work? Look, oh, look at the um, sunglasses, <laughs> the glasses. I just realized I may have, okay, okay. Um, totally awesome. Look at, oh my God. What is this? What is this? Urban Cathedral, Hope Wilmarth. Remember we saw the cathedral window by Nora, by Nora. Okay, what are we at? What are we at? Hold on, world clock, hold on, world clock. What's going on? What's going on? Wait, wait, I need, where's my stopwatch? No, timer, no, world clock. <gasps> I need my countdown, where's my countdown? Where's my countdown? Where's my countdown? Somebody, why isn't my countdown working? Okay, hold on, I need to do the five, four, three, two, one thing. Hang on, hang on. Oh no, okay, okay, wait, wait, world clock. No, okay, okay, I, I, I don't know where the thing is for the, okay, and then the last quilt, this one, this one, it's great. Kathy York, One Earth, okay. We're gonna go to this, and we're gonna go to this. Yes, and this, okay, here we go. Look, look, it's like, it's it's the sun, it's it's the sun. Okay, um, yeah, it, happy new year! Happy new year, everybody! It's two, 2022, and you're here, and I'm here, and we made it. We made it and 2022, we got this. We got this. We did 2020, we did 2021, and now we're gonna do 2022. And you know what? Everything that we saw tonight, everything that we saw tonight, the beauty, the talent, the skill, the, the uh, perseverance, the inspiration, the community, it's all with us. It's always been with us. We've got it. We carried it. We've carried it all the way up to this moment and we're going to carry it through. And I love you. And I think you look great. And I'm so glad that you're here. And happy new year to you. Cheers. And I mean, Auld Lang Syne. I don't even know what that means. I hadn't sung it. I hadn't, I hadn't hummed it till now. Happy New Year. Dogs are upset, Padma. The fireworks are going. Dogs are upset, but they have you as their human. They're going to be fine. You know, they're going to be fine. Uh, 
bless you. Listen, Laura, Laura, I'm so, oh, yay, Laura's waking up to the live stream. You're in the Netherlands. I love that you're waking up. That's, you know, that is the best way to have the stream end tonight. It is Laura who is waking up right now. Many of us are going to bed, many of us are tired, right? But Laura is waking up and she's waking up on the first day of 2022. And Laura in the Netherlands has the whole day ahead of her and so does everybody else. And we did it. We did a New Year's show. I think it's gonna be a thing. Thank you to everybody who was here tonight. Um, you're very special and I hope that you sleep well and have a great day and I'll see you tonight. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. Mwah. So much love to you.